All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy uh, Sunday. <laughs> I've streamed so many times in the last week that I have lost track <laughs> of what day it is. Good morning. Happy, um... I don't need to say happy Sunday again. <laughs> Trains. I have a 200 character limit again. <laughs> Aha, I get fucked. <laughs> We're three minutes into the stream and I'm already swearing. Good morning, 12.04 p.m. Come on, Bup. We both know that morning extends to at least 2 p.m. <laughs> Considering local sleep schedules. Morning is whatever I say. Good morning. I'm just saying you're taking my shit. Oh, don't worry, Bup. I've been taking your shit for years. <laughs> Surprised you haven't asked for that, um, <laughs> that light bulb back yet. <laughs> <clears throat> so we have a whole bunch of trains set up this morning. We have a passenger service in Whittier. We have the freight train that we're running right now. A little locomotive here at one end of the line. And off at the other end of the line, we have uh, another freight train ready to go downhill. And we actually... <laughs> I forgot to move this engine off camera. I really should have. This engine is supposed to be in Robinson's Gap. <laughs> Can get number two started east. Sounds good. Sounds good. A locomotive is this. This is the G25. I picked one up because we had one previously on this save that we sold. And, well, we, were, we didn't really sell it, actually. We just replaced it with a newer locomotive. And I was thinking that the P18 was starting to get a little weak on the passenger service, so I replaced it with the 440. <clears throat> So now we have a 440 heading the uh, passenger service. And to replace the 440 on a freight, I got one of these. It's 80 degrees. It's 80 degrees, and I have to wear sunscreen again. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, don't remind me. I'm gonna have to do the same, Colorado. I've, we're not in 80 degree weather yet, but we're we might be reaching the season where I might have to consider sunscreen, considering that my uh, my skin can act like paper some days and just instantly burn. Also, I just realized I have another car I need to pick up. I'm stupid. <laughs> yep, my YouTube bro. It says someone who isn't active at the moment is live while you're alive, and it says you're not active. That's not YouTube breaking, that's just average YouTube. <laughs> it happens all the flipping time. Hello, Max. Welcome to the stream. Just got the a Decapod on my save. Loving using it. Dude, the Decapod is one of my favorite engines. Admittedly, I'm a little bit biased because of my Russian significant other, but <laughs> I still like the way it looks. Currently trying to figure out what to eat for lunch. Um, the mold that's growing on your roof. Or pizza. Pizza's a good option. 
<laughs> yeah, we got we got some of the best pizza last night in town. We got some. Um, there's a place around here called Flying Pie, local chain. Uh, love it. Mwah. But uh, for some reason, the cheese was extremely sticky this time. And uh, it kind of just didn't work out as well as it normally did. It actually made me feel a little sick last night, so that's fun. <laughs> How bad is it that I've gotten sunburned under a regular old fluorescent lighting? Okay, that, that just takes skill there, radio. <laughs> that's a special kind of talent. Should I add this one lonely PAX card to number two? Yes, I was planning on putting it on there, but I, uh, I forgot to. I forgot to sequence my cards correctly, so I kind of just left it on that track. But yes, I, I would add the, uh, coach to that train. Texas Heat, how's the temperature in Portland today? I don't actually know. Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, 54 and cloudy, apparently. <laughs> Watching this 10 wheeler struggle is gonna be fun. Hey, it's an empty load. You'll be fine. <laughs> There's clearly zero things to worry about. It's totally not like you're gonna stall on the uphill grade. <laughs> Computer is breaking for some reason. Auto set the stream to 480p, tried to set it back to 1080, and my screen went straight to black. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. Just disconnects. Get that Skype sound effect. <laughs> or somebody leaves the call. Decided to move my number three to Whittier as a logging slash switcher loco, cause I I don't know why, but dropping off cars at Whittier with the freight train is just crazy inconvenient. I I 100% get that. <laughs> if you if you're going from Silva to Bryson, it's like ah oh, yes let me let me just stop my train here in the middle of the main line to drop like five car well okay it's more than five cars but. When you're trying to haul a long distance heavy freight, it can be inconvenient to um to drop off the cars for Whittier. Totally get that. Have you played around with the new logging gondolas mod? I do not have any mods that add new rolling stock to the game. It's not really my cup of tea. I like the game in its current state and don't really feel like changing it. <clears throat> the only mods I've actually installed are the ones that adjust how much of the interchange you can serve, and the only reason I added those was because of the because of how many cars we had of the old save. Send help. <laughs> We have no pizza or leftovers, so I might have to go out and get something. Not sure what, though, because most restaurants are closed Sunday and Monday over here. Get, like, a, a really cheap sandwich from a local store. <laughs> Just get, like, um, 
I, I know there's no supermarkets really close to you, but get one of those sort of like su supermarket esque deli sandwiches that are all right, but kind of a little bit tasteless. Just get one of those. My computer died and everything on it went to the eternal soup. No! Ugh, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. I've, I've had that happen before a couple of times, and it is so flipping frustrating. I had one computer that legitimately broke off its hinges. That was not a fun time. <laughs> gas station food. Exactly, get gas station food. Hello Orson, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. Been playing Railroads Online a bit more recently, and apparently the brakes are strong enough to not only crash the train, but the game as well. We experienced that plenty of times on uh, a little over a week ago. It is not fun. Zero out of ten, would not recommend. <clears throat> Though when we streamed it on last Friday, uh, on Twitch... It was uh, it was pretty stable actually. We didn't have those um, those crashes surprisingly. Didn't really have any issues. Earlier today, I forgot to leave my cars at Bryson, and I brought like eight extra cars to the coal place. <laughs> Delivery for Robinson's Gap. Why do you have gondolas? Because we just needed a little extra coal storage today. <laughs> that's that's not what we use gondolas for. <laughs> Decapod sways around so much, it looks like it's gonna go on to six wheels. Wait till you see the Berkshire! <laughs> you can always adjust sway intensity in the, uh, in the game settings. That goes a long way in, um, not making it look like it's about to bin itself every five seconds. <laughs> Mother told me to call one of our neighbors and gave me the local police number instead of the correct number. I don't have anxiety, but holy hell, I don't think I'm ever making another phone call again. <laughs> Join the cult. <laughs> Join the cult. Never answer your phone ever again out of mortal fear. <laughs> How was your week? Oh, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. I don't remember if I meant... When did I get it? it was, oh, right, it was last week on Sunday. We got a new Steam Engine, though, for the 130 layout. <laughs> a new wheel arrangement that we don't actually have yet. And we also... What else is there that we got? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we got Cork Roadbed laid the other night. Of oh, the bench work, and I'm really excited about that because it means that today we're actually going to start working on. We're, we got a few gaps in the cork road bed to fill, but we're going to start working on the actual track work and getting the four by six layout uh, up and running. <laughs> so, so that's the big exciting news from this week. Finish that last night, um, and today we'll be getting down the track work. What is this locomotive? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say I like keeping the, that a secret. Gotta have that suspense, man. 
Currently enjoying some delicious hot cocoa. Lucky you. Hold on, bunk. First person driving, let's go. Actually, hold on, hold on. Is this thing filled up on water and coal? Okay, it is filled up on water and coal, we're good. I feel sneezing coming in, I hate this. <coughs> uh, mm, ow, my back. I like the intense swing. It is really funny because it makes people really stressed out that something bad is gonna happen. Like, oh no, that's just that's just a normal Tuesday morning. <laughs> Whole ton of people love harassing me. That sucks. Why would people do that? <laughs> I know that's a really stupid question to ask because there's like 70 million answers about the psychology of harassment, but still. <laughs> Wish the caboose gave you some kind of bonus like the observation car, like increasing safety rating fast. That would actually be a really cool way to incentivize using the caboose. Zane. That's a really clever idea. I like that. It would be very helpful for someone like me who keeps losing 2% rating every day because I, I bonk something a little too hard. The Grandster? God, I don't know why that reminds me of this, but... <laughs> we actually... So, fun fact about the benchwork for our layout. We, uh... We got these little plugs from, like, the UK or something that we could use as a, um... For, for electrical connections between modules, because we actually have two, uh, three section of layout. It's not just one 4 by 6 sheet. Uh, in order to make it so that we could take it out to train shows, and, and take it out of the basement, too, uh, we decided to split up the layout into three 2 by 4 modules, or segments. And so because of this, we needed some way to make sure that there was power connecting the modules, right? And so what we did was we got these little alignment pins that are designed to, uh, to A, align the layout, and B, uh, supply power. So we got four of them. We, we got two pairs on two modules. And what happened? Uh, sorry, brain is... Right, right. The stupidest thing happened. I don't remember the exact measurements, but because it was a British thing, it was using, um, what's the term? Metric. It was not using imperial measurements. And my father was like, oh yeah, we can, we can cheat the system. We can, um, <laughs> we can just use an imperial drill to drill the hole that we need for this. And so he got out a half inch drill. And he drilled the hole uh, for for the pegs and whatever. And what we found was it was ex <laughs> after doing some online research, we found out that the hole that he drilled at half an inch was one sixty fourth of an inch too small. 
And so we had to go out and get a new drill bit that was 33 64ths of an inch. The problem with this is that our drill was too small to handle that size of drill bit. The one, the one 64th size difference was life and death. And we had to get a new drill. But we found a new drill. Down at a local cheap shop, we found a drill that could handle it that was $1.75. But oh my god, it is so big. I'm tempted to paint on the side. Monster. <laughs> my father my father seemed approving of the idea when I brought it up to him in passing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge drill compared to the ones we already have. <laughs> Found out the A12 can pull a four-car passenger train up at two percent. Um, I'm I'm willing to bet that A12 can probably pull like a six-car passenger train up at two percent if you're using those smaller, lightweight cars or whatever. I was, I've been hoping this game would add one of those crazy coaches with a diesel engine, a doodlebug, or an RDC, or both. Honestly, a doodlebug or an RDC would be a fun little addition to the game, just get a two-car passenger train running. <laughs> My computer broke the day the big update came out, no. God, that's two people's computers who have broken in recent times, Ugh. That sucks. No <laughs> one sixty fourth of an inch. For F's sake, really? Yep. For F's sake, seriously. One sixty fourth of an inch was all we needed for this. never realize just how steep minecart tracks are until you realize, remember one block is one meter. Dude, it doesn't really matter if one block is one meter. The fact is, that's a 100% grade. Because <laughs> it's literally just a 45 degree angle. It's absurd. I remember reading a model rarity magazine that said, Use mercury pools as the contacts between the sections of your layout. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's terrible and glorious. I hate it. That's weird. Why did it pop me up there? Huh. Strones. A lot of energy passenger cars and modern preservation have diesel engines for just the sake of generating the electrical power they need to function when we use to haul people. Uh, don't they, don't most railroads and museums have like a special car dedicated for that? Like they they've got to convert a converted baggage car or something like that. Because I know over here at the Oregon Rail Heritage Foundation is something along the lines of, like, a combine, where the front segment of the combine has a generator and a diesel engine. A lot of PAX cars have that in them, too. Interesting. Personally, I haven't seen that yet, but maybe maybe I'm I'm not really paying enough attention. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, uh, why are we losing speed? That's strange. O seven F seven B, I think. I've seen a lot of trains where they have a diesel locomotive of some some kind that they'll use for power generation on like a steam excursion service. Man, we really can't pick up speed today. What's going on with that? Weird. Oh, there we go. Now we're going. Power cars are indeed used for that, but what do you do when a power car is impractical and there's no locomotive around equipped to provide the necessary power? You know, that is fair. That is true. I've never actually noticed that or seen that myself before. I wonder how I haven't, because that, that does make sense. That is practical, but it's a little strange in my head, I guess. Also, screw whoever was on that railroad crossing. You don't get any whistles. <laughs> I'm steaming your kinetic energy. Yes, steaming. Like steamed hams. Mmm, steamed hams. <laughs> hey, OT14. Welcome to the stream. American carriages do not have batteries on a dynamo? Um. I honestly don't know. I. <laughs> clearly, my, my knowledge on of this subject is not the biggest. <laughs> Ever watch any video of TVRM excursions? Nope. No, nope, maybe I have, but I just don't remember it. Which is kind of a common occurrence for me. Alright, pulling into Bryson, baby. Short sturm memory loss. Oh no, it's also long sturm memory loss. That bell sink. <laughs> Sturming fact, Minecraft cows produce roughly 875 milliliters of milk per bucket. Wait, so 100 con. Um... This, this means... This poses a mathematical question. How many buckets do you of milk do you have to take from a Minecraft cow in order to take more milk than the cow would normally weigh? <laughs> this is not an important scientific question, but it's one that I'm asking anyways. How do you adjust the text like that mod? Um, hold on. Uno momento. 
I will figure, I'll answer that question once I figure out what the heck I'm going to be doing here today. We have Appalachia Hardwoods. Oh, so we just need to swap around the shirt. This is, this is an easy job. Okay. So the way that you do the text, like on the tender here, this is in the base game. There's no mod stuff. Equipment, customize, and then you just add a whole bunch of uh, HTML parsing, basically. It's not actually HTML, I don't think. Um, but it's something that's standard Unity stuff. And so as long as you know what the Unity stuff is, it's very easy to make this text work. So for instance, this thing up here, this is to make the text bold. This changes the size of the text. This changes the size of the uh, indent. So, like, the spacing vertically between these letters. Uh, what do we have next? Then we have an indent at negative 20%. That means that it's going to the left 20% offset. Um, I am a little bit lost here. Hold on. And then BR... It allows you to do the actual indent. This stands for break. And that's how you get the two lines of text. Then we have indent at 20% to, to push it over to the right a little bit. Over here we've also got italics, which is just marked with the letter I. We've got some really fa- oh yeah, there's also C space. This uh, changes the amount of spacing between the letters. So hold on, I can, I can show off what that's like by adjusting this on the fly. We'll set this to uh, 50, because why not? <laughs> Worth it. Okay, let's, let's set that back. <laughs> <laughs> True fact, juicing cow juicing cows. That's a statement that I uh, I've never seen before and I I'm glad my my eyes have been blessed by this. <laughs> <laughs> Since you immediately after mention oranges, all, ca all I can imagine is, you know, one of those those little things you could get in your kitchen that you push into an orange to get out all of the, um, <laughs> to get out all of the juices or whatever. Do you just have one of those for a cow? You just push it into the other. <laughs> Don't worry about the infernal screaming. That's normal. <laughs> 875 liters is 231 gallons, and milk is 8.6 pounds per gallon. So that means you're getting about 1,986.6 pounds of milk per bucket. I think the answer is one, since I've never seen a 1,900-pound cow... <laughs> TK, that just that just sounds like a challenge to add something to the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> a italicized print looks really nice, actually. Yeah, it looks excellent. Um, hold on, I actually have. <sighs> Let me allow me to quickly demonstrate one of my best texts. This is for another save that I'm working on on the side. Uh, my best text formattings. This is one that I'm extremely proud of. <laughs> there are cows that get that big, but the ones MC cows are based off don't. So what you're telling me is we need to mod in bigger cows in Minecraft. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's get the old text back on this thing. Equipment, customize, bonk, bonk, bonk. Back to normal.
that, ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. I love the way that turns out. <laughs> the only problem is, I still haven't finished the videos for that series. We'll get them out eventually. I need to work on the passenger car episode. I might have to redo the passenger car episode. We'll see. We need to mod in Chianina cows. They can get up to 35,000 pounds. Holy cow. But I'm Tish. God, those things are are nearing two tons in weight. Jeez, Louise, man. Cheese, Louise. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I, I should turn around the engine before I do any of this. If you feed a cow on all dairy diet, does the milk get milkier? It depends on what hole you put it in, Trains. <laughs> Cause sure, you could feed it through the mouth, but there's definitely other orifices that you could force the milk into. We're gonna have... <laughs> by the end of the the year we're just gonna have like a yearbook of all the worst stir quotes known to man <laughs> <laughs> milk enemas for everyone in chat <laughs> it's like one of those Oprah episodes you get a milk enema you get a milk enema <laughs> God, this, is, this is so stupid I love it Out of context, stir quotes are getting a ton of new entries today. <laughs> I swear we we're really gonna have to do something like with what um my girlfriend and I do for Discord pins, cause we're out of we're out of pin storage on Discord, <laughs> and so we did. <laughs> We got a flash drive and we just save images of the random really funny things that we say to each other. Say the most random quote ever? The most random quote ever.
Hello, Mikey. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> he did it. He said the line. Say the line, Bart. <laughs> he did the thing. Wow. We're gonna find a guide for the text commands. I'm not sure there is a guide, but I can send you. Hold on. Allow me to grab a link. I'll send it in chat. Five, four, now. It's not the perfect guide because. Most of those don't actually work in game, but some of them do, and so you can experiment and figure out which work and which don't. It's got a new log card in the mail. Hey, nice, nice. <laughs> what kind of log card? Like a skeleton? Uh, logging disconnects? A flat car with, with log bunks on it? Maybe, maybe a gondola. <laughs> Put cottage cheese in the toilet until blocked. Call plumber. Tell plumber it all started with a milk enema. Away <laughs> reaction. Were logging guns a real thing? I saw that mod. I don't know. I I think. However, I've seen, you know, the new West Side Lumber Co. Hoppers that they have in Railroads Online. Those four wheeled hoppers. I think those are were used for logs. I've seen those in O and Thirty being used for logs at the very least. So I don't think it's completely off the table. It does seem a little weird, but but hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> I do know that they they used gondolas instead of bulkhead flats after a certain amount of time for pulpwood and cordwood and whatnot. Hey, Thomas and Bubble Guppies, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> that cottage cheese comment. All I can think of is one of those those YouTube prank channels you'd see in 2012 like it's canceled for for being like, "Oh, I killed my friend live on stream, not clickbait." And it's just a prank, bro. Totally didn't traumatize like 70 million teenagers out of that. <laughs> All right, so we're moving these Ela farm supply cars off of the train. I think we're gonna keep them off of the caboose though, cause I'm gonna wanna keep these at the head end of the train as we head for Ela, just so that we have a better time switching there. So we'll just move these over a track and grab the rest of the cars. Is murder not the greatest prank ever? <laughs> Psych! April Fools! I didn't mean to stab him this much! I meant to stab him only twice!
<laughs> Your Honor, my sub count is very high. <laughs> what else would there be? <laughs> you know, be really funny. Uh, a murder prank gone wrong, gone sexual. The implication of gone sexual is a very concerning statement. <laughs> Hello, Roberto. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Seen photos of gondolas loaded with logs in a book, but forgot the name of the book. But it was something about the Northern Pacific Railroad. Okay, so that probably did happen then. It does seem reasonable to do, you know? A little weird because I feel like you'd be able to stack more logs in like a steak flat or something, but whatever. It's not my logging company. I don't need to worry about how they handle it. <laughs> All right, and uh, thunk. Alright, so we have Bryson team, shit ton of Appalachia hardwoods, and then Coaling Tower. Shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Building a Lego set, and, once again, I'm missing exactly one piece. Let me guess, it's another light blue 1x2 plate. Or maybe not light blue, but regular blue, I don't know. All the big Lego sets I got were always missing at least one piece and had duplicates of others. Worse is a Technic piece for the internal structure. Oh boy. Well, if it's a Technic piece, maybe you can just find another one in your collection somewhere. Why does Lego City have such a massive crime problem? <laughs> it's because you can just steal a single brick from the side of someone's building and walk off with it and nobody will notice. 
Just like what happened to TK. <laughs> if you want to relocate a house, all you have to do is, is trespass like once a day. Take one brick home with you and then go back the next day and continue. And in a year, you'll have stolen some guy's house. Casually shunting the sawmill with a decapod. <laughs> Good luck and Godspeed. God, the one thing I like about using the the tank engine in this game is it it actually fits down there with like seventeen different cars. I once stole a big piece of ice. Ah, so that's where the glacier went to. <laughs> Charged me with burglary. That's a good one. I'm stealing that. I'm going to commit burglary myself. I'm not a fan of the plastic logs that came with it, with the flat car. Uh, one thing you can do is buy... You can actually buy just tiny little logs, log loads for like $15. You can grab them on eBay. It looked pretty nice. <laughs> nicely tuned, nicely in scale. Hey, you can use those instead. Assume, ass assuming you can actually remove the logs from the car you have. <laughs> I was actually considering getting some myself, because of the uh, the gondola or not the gondolas. This I, I was thinking of making the the Owen Thirty layout. Um, as some of you might remember, I was thinking of making it into a um, into a logging railroad, but I decided against it, and we're gonna be doing some uh, some lining instead. So maybe I'll get it for another layout in the future. Who knows?
bunk. Is it just me, but when you drop off a boxcar slash hopper slash tanker, do you open the doors and lid on the top of the wagon of choice when delivered? Uh, I think that's just you. <laughs> I personally don't, because honestly, I forgot you can do that most of the time. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody else out there who does it, though. Do I know who? No. Um, but I'm sure there's somebody. First I've heard of it, though. It's no difference, but it feels right. That would actually be kind of cool if it did make a difference, though. Oh man, you open up the door, you open up the hatch, you open up the, the coal chutes, and it, now the car will unload super fast. That'd be kind of nifty. Drive to the Larkin Junction. Ao, have we made money yet? Hey, maybe maybe once the um <laughs> once the passenger train unloads, we'll be able to repay another thousand bucks. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, for goodness sake! I'm missing two pieces. The new missing one is a one by one. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness. On one hand, I feel sorry for you, TK. On the other hand, that's hilarious. And I'm going to laugh at it. Hey, money. 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 Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, wait, no, I'm I'm stupid. I was, I was looking at the finances tab, I was seeing, got a train here that's at Whittier, at Bryson. No, that's that's not a passenger contract, that's a freight contract. I'm like, what the heck is up with these, these passenger train stops? No, no, that's just at Bryson Depot. Once I don't need to stop at Ela for the day. That's where you're wrong. You always need to stop at Ela. <laughs> it's the passenger car of the freight. Yeah, I figured that out for the Whittier haul. The thing is, my brain was like, oh, well, we obviously have... This is the passenger train coming down from Alarca Junction, right? No. No, it's not. And this is the train that was coming to, uh, to Alarca Junction, and this is it stopping at Bryson Depot, because that's, um, that was the next stop in the line. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> Just me, me being an idiot today. That's all. We gonna play some War Thunder. I don't know why, but when you say, <laughs> I 
mentioning War Thunder just makes me think of Wonder for some reason. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Super Mario Bros. War Thunder. That was a hard monk. But our car didn't get damaged, so who cares? When I think of War Thunder, I think of classified military document leaks. Uh, me too, buddy, me too. <laughs> Whenever I think of War Thunder, all I can think of is that one meme of days since wa uh, last military document leaked on War Thunder forums. Zero. <laughs> it's just a guy clapping. Made it to 58 of the crossing by Government Island. I don't know how, but I did it. <laughs> Lateness is no more with speed. Not if you derail. Not if you bin it immediately after the crossing. I was, I've heard people telling me they've made it up to 80 miles an hour there. Honestly, I could, believe, I, I could believe that you can make it up to 100 if you have a lightweight train and the right engine. Hey, Frisco 1355 welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. Now to see who gets to the Appalachia Hardwood switch first. <laughs> Says who I'm going to Appalachia Hardwoods. <laughs> I'm going to Robinson Gap just to screw with you. <laughs> I'll have to see how fast I can get the Burke. You can get the Burke pretty quickly, like day two. Or day three, probably. It's not that hard to grab. Oh, we have we have a standard oil car to grab today. I hate standard oil. <laughs> Let's 
I don't know why I despise Standard Oil so much because it's not even an indi in industry that I serve often. I just even at tier five, you only serve it like once a day at worst. <laughs> I'm just yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, meant how fast you can get to 100 miles an hour. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. It's inconvenient and so infrequent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because the weird grade that it's on. I don't know why, though, because it's not really all that bad. It's just... It's inconvenient because of the grade, and that's it. Like... <laughs> Actually, switching it out isn't that hard, all things considered. Oh god, wait, that's a 4% grade right there? I thought that was like a 2%. <laughs> I know it's got a steep... I knew it had a steep hill of some kind, but 4? Jeez Louise. Almost the steepest grade on the line if it weren't for red marble. That's right, we're gonna have an industry on this railroad. That's just a 6% grade. It doesn't actually go to any industry. I, oh no, sorry. This, the industry is on the 6% grade. Any reason you went back to YouTube streaming instead of Twitch? Uh, simple. The best way to get data on an experiment is to continue doing the control group. <laughs> Can't really have a fair comparison if you're, um... If you're only using one thing the whole time. <laughs> I think I mentioned this before, but I wish Railroader had mail contracts as a use for the baggage car. You get a mail hooks, if you don't want to do it within a time limit, you don't get any money. I remember, I think you have mentioned that before. Somebody's mentioned that before, at the very least. Got a switch of stuck trying to bring a car out of the oil spur. <laughs> oh, God. It's such a steep little hill. It's just... I could see somebody getting a switcher stuck down there. Some more info on the Southern Railway's Murphy Branch. Turns out there used to be a narrow gauge railroad starting in Andrews that headed into the mountains. Interesting. <laughs> Another logging railroad, perhaps? Considering the 7 million that there are <laughs> already. Speaking of 7 million logging railroads, I, could, I should probably get a. get walker running on this save Thank you. 
I see there is a passenger train. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I forgot the passenger train was over here. <laughs> Oops. I'll be out of the way in a minute. found the missing one by one, but I'm still missing the two Technic pieces, I, and I have a random extras that weren't in the instructions anywhere. Lamau. The mod for Undertale called UT Red and Yellow that combines UT- It should be called Undertale Orange, man. They had the perfect opportunity. <laughs> Bro, play Undertale Yellow, though. It's so good. It's so great. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's an excellent little screenshot. Love the way that looks. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Five cars that we need to sort out. up in models at the start of my log train. I'll take a look at it later. I sometimes, I don't know why I'm so inconsistent with this. Sometimes I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll check out the, the image right now. As other times, like, yeah, I'll just look at it later. <laughs> it's weird. gonna be a strange little interaction here, but I think... I think I know how to make this work. Also, wait, are we at tier 5? On Appalachia? We are! Okay, okay. I was wondering. I thought we were on tier 3 for whatever reason.
I had something I wanted to bring up, but I don't remember what it is. I had a conversation topic topic readied for whatever chat <laughs> chat died out. Um, name of the narrow gauge railroad that in Andrews was called the Snowbird Valley Railroad and was a logging road. Hey, <laughs> why am I not surprised? Started in 1908 and ended in 1916. It was only f over 15 miles long. Damn, only eight years? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Oh, right. A random question for chat. Remember what the subject was. <laughs> is the YouTube store page actually showing up properly for y'all, or is that just me being stupid and, and only getting a preview? <laughs> I'm gonna pop on the day before my birthday. Hey, happy early birthday, man. Things are going all right. Right now we are switching out Appalachia Hardwoods. Um, we got ourselves a good amount of stuff to do. Bonk. Oh, I forgot, I forgot to link up some glad hands over here. I better I forgot to hold, yeah, I just forgot to hold shift while sending up the glad hands. You not see a store? Didn't know there was one actually. Dang it! <laughs> so it is just failures. No, I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> Some of the logging railroads up here in Washington only lasted a year or less. I guess that does kind of make sense, cause. Once you exhaust an area of logs, there's not really much to do. So I guess there's that. All right, I know I know what I'm gonna be doing for this. I have the plan. <laughs> Hey, Grisson, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. Saw the store by going to the channel page and there was a tab on the far right. Okay, so it's showing up there at the very least. Let's go, it shows up somewhere. <laughs> I have to figure out how to enable it on videos and stuff. Alright, light kick. Considering logging companies have never bothered to replant trees, hence why many vanished. <laughs> Deforestation.png <laughs> the lemonade sticker. Do I want to know? No, no, you don't. I assume all these stickers showing up. I haven't. F I need to get the shot glass linked. It's probably something I should work on. <laughs> because why stop at a lemonade sticker when you can drink lemonade straight out of shot glass? <laughs>
<laughs> Where are my trees? You cut them all down. Where are my trees? There aren't any more trees. Where are my trees? <laughs> I can see that being a real exchange between a couple of people back in like the turn of the century. <laughs> Hello, T14. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'd choose my favorite logging railroad. It would be the wet, three foot West Side Lumber Company. And the tracks be later being used as a tourist line run by the same guy who started Taco Bell. A <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. I didn't know that. I know, but West Side is always such a quirky little railroad. There's so many goofy little things that have happened with West Side. I don't know much about it, but what little I do know is funny to me. <laughs> Like, if memory serves me, wasn't there a Heisler that was converted to standard gauge and then back to three foot gauge at some point that they used as a as a switcher for the sawmill? <laughs> Provided the Sierra. Oh, okay. That might also be why it's so well known. Provided the Sierra Railway with lumber traffic. Man, there's so many weird little railroads that were connected to the Sierra then. Because there's that, and there's also the, um... There was that one railroad they made to supply a dam for California. Like, I think it was for electricity production. I might be wrong. It might just be for water reservoirs. Found out the person who voiced the boy in the Owl Tootsie Top commercial used to own my house. I have no clue what the Owl Tootsie Top commercial is. Hetch Hetch, yes, that's the railroad. Hetch Hetchy Railway. The one used to construct the dam. I only learned about it because somebody made an Owen 30 layout that just sort of generically represents it, which is really funny to me because, like, ah, yes, Owen 30. <laughs> <laughs> the more I learn, the more I'm amazed at how many small point-to-point -point railroads there were. It's <laughs> You'd be impressed, Dion. Also, hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Uh, another good one to look into, Eon, um, that's actually kind of local. I don't remember the name of it, but there was a, there was a three-foot gauge, narrow-gauge railroad up in Ilwaco, Washington that ran along that little sort of peninsula along the Washington coast. I know it's not Oregon, it's not Oregon, but it's close. Ilwaco <laughs> is just across the river. <laughs> One who said, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? You know, for how many times I have heard that saying, I've never actually seen that commercial. <laughs> I don't know how I haven't seen it, but... Washington and Plymouth? It, I don't think that's it. I want to say it was just the Ilwaco Railway and Navigation Company. I'm not sure. I don't know. But I, I think that's what it was. It's okay, I think the commercial is older than you. The commercial's from the 60s, holy cow. <laughs> and it's still airing? What? Huh? Washington and Plymouth was southeast, I'm like 99% sure. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's the line I'm thinking of. Let me let me look it up again. Ilwaco Railway and Navigation Co. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that's the one. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, th this is the one I'm thinking of.
If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, true, true. Though I wonder if they've, like, slightly remastered the advertisements over the years or something. Because you, you know that is probably not as hip with the kids as it once was. They called it the irregularly, irregular rambling and never get there <laughs> railroad. A nice. I I love the silly nicknames that people give railroads to to comment on how poor, how bad, and how long it takes for them to reach their destination. <laughs> One thing I love about the Owaco Railway and Navigation Company is I've seen a photo from it where they have like a 440, a boxcar, a coach, and a combine. And that's the entire train. I don't know why, but I just, I, I really like the way that looks. Hey, there's the picture. <laughs> I think I know a little bit about it because there's an Owen 30 club that goes to a, a railroad museum there. And hangs out for a day or two. Funny one I found. The San Diego and Arizona Railway, a.k.a. the slow, dirty, aggravating. <laughs> Man, the burns back, back a couple of centuries ago. Not centuries. Decades? I don't remember the term. <laughs> they really got some good burns, huh? <laughs> Bonk. All right. Let's roll. Sumter Valley was nicknamed the Stump Dodger for how their track winded around and felt like they were just dodging random stumps. <laughs> I, I've seen the I've seen some photos of the line. I can see why people would say that. <laughs> What was that noise? <laughs> Do you see that video of the railroads of the Klondike I mentioned in the last stream I was in? Um, probably not. <laughs> My memory is really terrible when it comes down to people telling me, "Hey, you should you should check out this thing." Okay, I'll do it after stream. After stream, I'm just I just forget. 
Completely. <laughs> This is what I learned about last year. The North Pacific Coast Railroad, 1874 to 1902, used to run from a ferry across from San Francisco out to the coast and up along into the Redwoods. I lived in that area for 20 years and only recently learned about it. <laughs> the power, the power of joining communities with, with extreme train nerds. <laughs> Those are the guys who had the 440 cat. Oh, wait. Oh yeah, that is the railroad of the four the cab forward 440, isn't it? <laughs> Whistle sounded sick. The bad kind of sick. The, the ill sick. It's fine. If somebody perishes, it's not me. I'm not driving that train. In fact, it's only an AI driving that train. So if somebody perishes, it's just the AI. We don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> Wait, the NPC's cab forward was the inspiration for the SP cab? Really? Oh no, that's that's a trip. <laughs> All right, bring her to a halt. Because we want to grab the stuff from Ela House and Ela Farm Supply first. NPC Cab Forward also had a water tube boiler and hit two different deaf people on different occasions. What in the heck? <laughs> Also the home of NPC number 12, one of three surviving Baldwin 818Cs, aka Eureka's Loco class, which happens to be on display next to SP4294. <laughs> I do love that their abbreviation is NPC. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny to think that back then it's like, oh yeah, just go ride the NPC. And nowadays if you say that, it has very different context con and connotations. <laughs> Anyone else remember when I kind of just showed up here? We all start somewhere in life. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, why I'm going for the mobster with this sort of inspirational quote sound and BS, but uh... Here we are. <laughs> God, what I, I hate the fact that straight up I have to say the word Tony to, to get the mobster down just right, otherwise it just sounds wrong to me. <laughs> it just sounds off. Tony, as for my origin story, what's an origin story? I I just kind of showed up a few months ago and I I haven't left. <laughs> they they haven't kicked me out yet. I'm still hiding in the rafters. <laughs> okay, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but Eon Rafter. Enjoy the pun. I have no clue what you can use it for, but enjoy the pun nonetheless. <laughs> I 
Thought a funny face to add to your stream. Stirred or oh, that'd be a good one. Actually, that'd be really nice, really clever. <laughs> I'm six foot nine. My hand is already in the rafters. <laughs> If there's any that you've bonked your head on too many times, just write the word Eon on it. And just leave it there. Generations in the future will... <laughs> will come back and wonder the historical significance. Used to have an alt on Twitch named Elon Raptor, but then I let it expire a long time ago. Entirely understandable. Entirely fair. Also, at the time, a very clever pun. But, uh... <laughs> you know that one John Trod meme? That didn't age so well. That's all I can think of right now. <laughs> Holding up the little scroll, looking at the camera with a little shock and disgust. For once, I've done my switching and I can fly past Bryson and Ela. Wow. You got nothing for both? <laughs> that one didn't quite age quite so well. You want to make the accent even more better, you should make the T more like a D. I know that I know there's like little things like that I can improve. We gotta get a list, a list of things, and I gotta go to speech therapy so that I can start, I can just snap into the Tony voice. <laughs> so, so I can make an alter ego. <laughs> I found some info about what I'm going to model. There was a rail line that ran up the Skagit River Valley, but built by the Northern Pacific which is where I'm modeling then interchanged uh... message ends <laughs> I have a permanent indent for me on the top of my head from hitting things no when I was a teenager, I ran into a cast iron chandelier that was at face level. Good lord. I knocked myself out. I do not want to imagine the, uh, the pain. The, the nasty headache that would have come from after that experience. I will happily p pass on that mental image. Interchange with Seattle City Light Railroad that moved the supplies to build. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> A little logging road that interchanges with something kind of like the, uh, the Hetch Hetchy. <laughs> My everyday style for walking around my house is that it looks like I'm constantly about to do that one Russian dance. The Chaika- the Kaskotsky kick. Whatever it is. The one TF2 emote. <laughs> That's where I know it from. Is that a, a T22 per chance that you're operating? No, this is, this is a G25. We got a T22 on uh, the train between Olarka Junction and Hemingway right now.
Have you seen the new logging cars on Nexus? They're really great. I have seen them, but they also seem just a little boring to me. So I'm probably just gonna stick with um with skeleton cars myself. Like on one hand they're cool. On the other hand, <laughs> I don't need that many logs and I kinda like having it longer trains. A little more of a challenge. I also like playing the game vanilla, so Yes, there's that to throw on the, the list of, of reasons that I don't want to grab it. <laughs> May have gotten my T22 up to 63 MPH at Governor's Island. I love that mod, but this also partially because I need to do 4,000 tons of cordwood a day because of mods. That, you know, that is entirely fair. I think under that context, it's, it's fitting, and it works. <laughs> you actually have to do a ton of logs per day. Actually, that could be really fun to make it so, uh, so the logging camps... <laughs> or at Tier 5, I actually have to deliver, um... 56 logs a day, so I have to actually go to every logging camp and load the, up every car, get all the logs from every individual location. That'd be fun. Very silly, but fun. Seen a video of someone at a Comic Con pl cosplaying as Pyro. He passes a random guy with his flamethrower and does that one funny TF2 Soviet dance. <laughs> I think my my favorite TF2 meme that I've seen so far is that one person, or or that group of people, I guess, who who all go to different conventions dressed as a spy from TF2 wearing a different face mask based on uh, what kind of convention they're going to. <laughs> You say fun. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> you keep saying that word. That's that's the correct quote. Isn't that a isn't that a quote from the Princess Bride? I feel like I vaguely remember that. Ah. Yes, it is. You keep suing. You keep suing that word. <laughs> I love typos. <laughs> you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. I also like having those model logging cars as I don't find those skeleton cars looking good in the main line at speed. You know, that is fair. That is fair. They do look a little bit funny. I kind of wish that we had, like, actual just, like, stake flats or something for that. I think that would be cool. That would be a nice alternative that would look a little more competent on the main line. At least in my opinion. Recently I was playing Scout and grabbed a health pack at about 100 HP. 
<laughs> then a demo pulled up at like 40 HP, and we just stared e at each other. Me and Shane. <laughs> Uh, the class- the, the classic scout experience. Ah, the G25 mogul, aka the mascot of the mogul cult on Discord. You know that the- you can actually get a G25 in HO scale? So if you wanted to model your own railroad from from railroader, you could actually represent it with just those moguls. <laughs> My dad actually has one. It, it's labeled for the New York Central, and he picked it up for a hundred dollars with DCC and sound. <laughs> Just gonna take a screenshot right there of the sketchiest head on appearance. <laughs> totally not terrifying any of the passengers in that train. One hundred percent looks sketchy even from my angle. <laughs> the day the railroad owner perished due to his own hubris. <laughs> give these cars a little bit of a kick just so we can speed this up a little bit there was some talk about higher capacity log cars on the railroad to steam discussion page about how about it and I wish the game developers would add some higher capacity log cars and pulpwood cars I don't know if it would be the best or the worst idea, honestly. Like, I don't know if it would be a good or bad one, but one thing I do remember from my time working on Railroad, um, the customer is not always right. The customer often <laughs> knows what they want, but they don't always know how that affects other things that they already enjoy. Bonk. Customer is so often wrong. Isn't this saying something along the lines of like the customer is right in what they know what they the general idea of what they want is, but not necessarily the specifics or how everything works? I, I don't remember the I don't remember the literal saying, but it's something along the lines of that, right? Right. <laughs> customer is wrong like ninety nine percent of the time. Hello, Corey. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Planning on getting one of those is my number five. Since it's a mogul, and five, do I have the option to not name AJ? <laughs> you do, but all the Thomas fans will, will eat you alive. <laughs> Customers always write in matters of taste. Exactly, that's, that's the quote, that's the quote. <coughs> mm. Mm. 
Excuse me. Looking over photos of the last surviving models from John Allen's Gory and defeated for the billionth time, and wishing that that great layout hadn't been ravaged by fire. It's... God, I have so many fond memories of that layout. And you know, maybe maybe I need to build a mock-up, a, a remake of the original 4x6 foot uh, Gory and Defeated in 0 and 30. <laughs> maybe that'll be the next big project on the channel. I'll never not get confused when Cory Gibson joins all the streams. My name, Cory. My name is Cory. Key difference, Cory does not equal Cory. Yet, I'm still confused because there's no pronunciation change. <laughs> Welcome to the English language. What do you want? <laughs> I'll have a side of there, there, and there today, please. I want a little bit of extra there, please. G and D was a legend. The G and D is truly legendary. I think the fact that it burned down is also weirdly kind of helped to make it even more significant than it already was. Like because it's gone, that it just makes it even more memorable. Because memory is all we have of it now. I'll take I before E, except after C is more often true when inverted for 200, Alex. <laughs> had so many fu funny close calls before. I had 2,500 tons of pulpwood headed to Silva, running at 445 miles an hour before reaching Thomas Valley. Suffice to say, there were only four seconds between when the passenger train got into the siding of Thomas Valley and the pulpwood train ramming the switch. <laughs> Lamau. God, can you imagine being somebody on the observation car of that passenger? Assuming you run observation cars. On the end of the passenger train. Watching out. Ah, oh, what a nice day. And then all of a sudden this train just flies past out of the track you were on two seconds ago. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> It's literally like that moment from Emperor of the North Pole, a... Hey, Darknut, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. No worries about missing the last few streams, it's been a little weird with the Twitch experiments and whatnot. New save. Now we've we've played on this save a couple times on stream before. If you make that layout, letter the equipment for the narrow gauge, the devil's gate, and hell and gone. <laughs> Is that um? Was that the... <laughs> someone who knows of his narrow gauge line too? Hey, see, 
I, I was about to say, is that? I feel like that's a name that was used on the Gorian defeated for a narrow gauge line. <laughs> and uh, I can see that I was correct. It might take us a while before I even actually legitimately consider it. Um, consider making another layout, because we, we just built the cork for a current 4x6. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's a bit of a song, swan song, really. After John Allen's death, the layout burned in a swan song. The layout died with him. Yeah, didn't it, bur it perish around the same time as his death? Like, a little after, of course, because... <laughs> he didn't commit the arson, at least not intentionally. Or I should say, sorry, at least not while alive. I do remember hearing some theories that it was always heated a little poorly, and he always said things... Like he wanted it to be gone when he was gone. I don't know, it's a, it's a damn shame though that so many locomotives were lost down there. But hey, at least we have- there are a couple still in preservation. Like isn't there one at the- the Combalk headquarters? In uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin? That was completely out of the fire? That was a real three-foot gauge railroad in South Carolina, by the way. Dismal Creek or Dismal Swamp? <laughs> How enticing of a name. <laughs> Just wondering, the line to Silva is still drivable even if I haven't bought the line? I think so, yeah. I haven't personally done this, but I, I've heard some people have done it before. The line exists even if you don't own it. Layout was burned in an accidental fire ten days after his death. The fire was started by someone who didn't know which stove to turn on and put the, on the one that was too close to the layout. Yeah, exactly. And he had terrible ventilation and so it burned the layout. There are two operational GND Ho40s, number 9 and number 10. Ooh. I think the one that I know of is a little bit larger, and I'm not sure if it's operational, but it's like a 284 or a 282, something like that, Berkshire, Berkshire Mike. Much bigger. <laughs> much, much bigger than an 040. Oh, it was a... Uh, it was an electrical fire from what I heard. It happened after that one session in memory of him. It was definitely a fire, however, caused by something that was a little too close in proximity to the layout. From what I remember. I don't, I don't remember if it was a stove or if it was electrical, but it was something, something too close in proximity to the layout that caught everything on fire too quickly. I saw a video of someone making a scratch-built replica of G&D number 34. Ooh, the, the 410 with the booster on his tender. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny and cool. <laughs> Back in 2015, there was a house on the market for 14.5 million. Came with a gauge one garden layout about with about two miles worth of track. This is in the UK. Here, 
it, there was actually a house for sale a couple of years back. I don't know how much it sold for, but there's a house for sale. Um, back, God, I don't know when, but it had an FN3 layout in a barn and a 7.5 inch or seven and, and a quarter inch gauge railroad on the on a massive property. It was just this little farmhouse off in the distance. The, the house itself was smaller than the barn that the FN3 layout resided in. <laughs> what, did you in class are you driving? We're driving the G25. Didn't we mention that earlier? I feel like I, I mentioned that before. Just noticed that as, as I was watching the stream. Dude, it was such a cool... Well, I've been there so many times. It used to be even cooler, though. There was, a, like, a Lionel setup. Um, uh, on the second floor of the barn. Unfortunately, that got axed at some point. But they still have the FN3 layout. <laughs> So, what track on the interchange is clear right now? Okay. I think we'll have to go onto this track. Hopefully the cars can fit. And then we'll use this, this little spur as a run around and shove the cars onto this main track over here where there's more than enough space to fit them. Wish I had the money to buy that 15 inch gauge, 3 cylinder, 412. Dude, God. 15 inch gauge is so huge, though, when it comes down to models. At that point, why not just buy a 2 foot gauge engine? There's a house for sale in North Carolina that had a decent seven and a half inch gauge system that spanned into the neighbor's yard. At <laughs> a massive curved trussle bridge on the main line. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's funny, really. My B day is tomorrow. My B day tomorrow is on the day my city declares a doomsday with all the tourists coming in for the eclipse. The end is nigh! If you're gonna buy a two-foot gauge engine, why not just go for three-foot? Because two-foot. I, I have no other justification than two-foot. <laughs> um, what kind of three-foot gauge engines would you even be able to pick up, though, for that kind of price? Then again, what kind of two-foot gauge engines...
two foot gauge forney anybody yeah let's let's get a two foot gauge forney regauge it to a three foot one inch not three foot gauge three foot one inch very specifically three foot one inch I'm gonna feel bad for all the MFs that are going to tell their boss to F themselves because they think the world will end and they could do whatever and then nothing happens. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna feel bad for those guys at all because uh, it's just Darwinism at its finest. <laughs> Natural selection. <laughs> One foot eleven and sixty-three sixty-fourths inch gauge. Hell yeah. We're we're gonna need to get that that one drill bit that's one sixty-fourth of an inch different. <laughs> Why? I don't know. But we will. <laughs> When I get the cold drag to Whittier, I think I might call it. I'm barely staying awake already. No worries, Nina. No worries. Rest is important. And uh, I totally understand, because I also was a little bit sleep-deprived this morning. <laughs> I've been through so many. The world's gonna end at this point. I'm just disappointed <laughs> that it hasn't. It's only a matter of time. Don't worry. Uh, what... The big plan, make the Mayan calendar 2.0. This time, though, to guarantee that the prophecies are true, hook it up to all nuclear launch um, codes. Best track gauge ever was probably 915 millimeter gauge. One railroad ran at 915 millimeter gauge. Three feet is 914 millimeters. It was three foot one millimeter gauge essentially. Uh, they really, they really got that pedantic over their track gauge to try and stand out, huh? <laughs> Forney at the gauge of two three two feet three quarters of an inch. I guess one millimeter really wouldn't make as big of a difference if it was, if it was like one centimeter. <laughs> God. Six no fifty nine centimeter gauge. That's that's the gauge we need to build trains to right now. My eyes might not be working right because there's a semi transparent blue line uh, outline around the PNG tuber, but only on one side. And for some reason, the blue sweater looks green around the shoulders and down one of the arms. Um, are, are you sure that's not the bit rate TK? <laughs> Man, what is what is up with Stenzel? Why does Stenzel keep getting more cars than it needs? Cause if you wanna who wants to place a bet that there's two cars over here at the East Whittier Interchange for, bound for Stenzel? Because you don't need to place a bet. There's two cars. Why?
plotting again for a G25 or an A26. I like the A26, but I feel like the G25 is slightly better, but eh, it looks... I like the G25 and looks way better over the A26, personally, but that's that's always a subjective point. Um, the one thing about the, the G25 that it has that, that, that severely outclasses the, um, the A26 is factor of adhesion, and also turning radius, but factor of adhesion. It's only 100 pounds of tractive effort weaker. But it's factor of adhesion there, you know, it's, it's 4.9 versus 4.1. Now it looks red in one spot where it didn't before. And some of the hair is looking green too. I think it's my eyes, not the bit right. Uh, TK, make sure you're hydrated. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind for me. What does adhesion mean, I may ask? I'm a bit goofed on American terms for of railroading. Adhesion is basically, I want to say traction, but it's not traction effort. Uh, not tractive effort. Hold on. Um... Factor of adhesion is how much weight is being put on each wheel. And so a higher factor of adhesion means that the this, the wheels here are gripping to the rails better because there's more weight on them. And normally in real life you want a factor of adhesion of around 4. But from what I'm, I'm able to tell. But in game, uh, the higher the number the better. So kind of like weight distribution? Yeah, basically weight distribution. hydrated and the red spot has expanded hydration isn't gonna immediately magically fix everything you might want to talk to somebody or maybe like call an advice nurse or something at that rate basically how well they stick to the rails think like when you put your hands together open palm and try to slide them the harder you push against each hand the harder it is for them to slide. exact <laughs> That's a very basic, exp like, science experiment, but it's a perfect example. Mike OA26 doesn't seem to be a hugely end of the world difference. Uh, it's not a huge end of the world difference, no, but it is a very notable difference. <laughs> As somebody who used to use the A26, I, I'm i more comfortable with the G25. I, I also kind of don't like how the A26 looks. It's not bad, but it's just not my cup of tea. See what else is there? I guess the A26 does have better water and coal capacity, but another problem with the A26 is that it's just a heavier engine. 
coming in at 195,000 pounds versus the 142 of the um, the mogul. <laughs> Power looks biggest question of the year. <laughs> Well, see, for me, it's easy because it's power and looks at the same time. Big brain play. Just enjoy. <laughs> just just get whatever train is functional and be happy with it. <laughs> I think that Stenzel MFG is a major machine co shop company and has a fair amount of business in the local area, i.e. keeps the businesses like Whittier and Sawmill and so in operation. Yeah, but like, why have they ordered more cars than they actually physically need? A26 is ugly. I don't think it's ugly. It's just... It's weird. Considering that Whittier Sawmill, hold on, pin the wrong button. The, the Whittier Lumber Company, the name for my uh, the Whittier, my name for the Whittier Sawmill, is basically the biggest employer. Stencil Manufacturing and Hallfield Heating Oil <laughs> are just local businesses, basically. I find the A26 is better to do passenger runs than freight. Yeah, I usually put it on passenger runs myself, but... A26 enjoyers, rise up against this slander! <laughs> yeah. We ride at dawn, my friends. <laughs> Actually, we don't live right at dawn because I don't have an A26. <laughs> we had one, but then we, we scrapped it. Because reasons. Senzel does get more cars they need to invest in a second sighting. Dude, they've, they've got more cars. That's the thing. <laughs> Stenzel is currently... Here's the problem. The Stenzel manufacturing, in its current state, has two cars of machine parts that they're unloading. Despite the fact that they have two cars of machine parts that they should be unloading, only one of them... It's actually here right now. Hold on, hold on, actually. Hold on. Okay, so it's, it's straight up... This is not a problem that we, we're not moving cars around enough. It's a problem that they just... I hate this. I hate this so much, we're probably going to have to turn the stencil down a tier because this is so stupid. Why is it like this? <laughs> we scrapped it, much to the dismay of a certain someone. <laughs> exactly. Maybe for the dismay of a certain someone, but legally that can't be proven.
All right, hold on. What what jobs do we have to do right now? Well, we got the we got the return trip from up there. Got the two eight o. Got the passenger service. Got the. Wait a minute. What's number two doing? <laughs> oh, I see. Number two is serving as a uh, a backup passenger service today. I see. I see. <laughs> I think we're going to be sitting here for a little bit as we wait for engine number four to make it back down the hill. You know, let's ride, actually, let's ride number four. Why not? Pretty soon this is it. Yeah, it's AI controlled. <laughs> Doing some more research that the railroad that Seattle City Light ran was electric due to the steep grades. So there's, there's my electric industrial railroad. Oh, that's kind of fun. I have a steam a steam logging line interchanging with an electric industrial. <laughs> Mildly annoyed at the fact that less than two days after I finally solved my tender shortage for my Lionel O gauge engines, I got gifted another O gauge engine and now I'm one tender short again. Lamau. Where are we now? We're we're heading into Bryson. Just watching the uh Wait a minute. Oh, you know what we can do. We can ride the caboose. In fact, we can ride from the cupola. We can take pictures as we ride along from here. <laughs> you prefer? Do you prefer the original C five fifty five looks? The recent revamp? Uh, I haven't seen the recent revamp actually. I have not played with the C fifty five since the revamp happened. As your finance, oh, we're only about fifty thousand in the hole. I'm honestly confident that we'll be able to pay this in a week or two in game. It's a pretty low loan. All things considered. And once it's repaid, we can take out a new one. And what about a logging road that used electric locomotives? That'd be kind of stupid, honestly. Like, not from the perspective of, oh, that'd be. Okay, okay. So, there's two problems with it, I should say. On one hand, you don't have the fire to worry about burning down your forest. On the other, the one big thing you want to do with the logging railroad is constantly rebuild it because the trees aren't... <laughs> the trees aren't going to be easily coming to the railroad tracks. And so you need to be able to quickly rebuild it, and if you have to lay out electric lines every time that you, you expand to a new logging camp, that's just going to be a headache, you know? I can see it happening, though, where there's an electric railroad for, like, a, a log company where they either have trucks that are supplying the electric railroad, or 
they have a, a river transloading logging operation. Whereas Robinson's Gap, I've never seen a label for it on the map. Uh, that's because it's not really its own town. Robinson's Gap is right here beside Alarca Junction. So this set of tracks, this little spur that shoots off and up into the north. Third rail elect electrics, no overhead lines needed. Yeah, but third rail also provides its own problems, especially regarding local wildlife. Which, then again, I'm, I'm sure that some railroads wouldn't care. But you'd also have to worry about supplying the electricity, and that, that might also be its own problem. Good sir, I know you might have started a week or two before me, but good glory, how does one have this much? I just have the basic started two and a T22, just that and Bryson. It's called, I know how to exploit the game. <laughs> I have been playing this for long enough that I've straight up... I have a speedrun strategy for if I want to expand to Robinson's Gap. It might be a bad thing if you're logging railroad. Is setting deers on fire? They could run into the forest and cause trouble. <laughs> Ironically enough, there was one electric logging road I know of. It had an electric main artery and used steam locos for the branches. That makes sense. That makes sense. It also ran through a coal mine at one point. Lamau. It was also 42-inch gauge. Cape gauge. Cape gauge. Please tell me it has not to do with the sawmill. Oh, no, no, you need the sawmill. Sawmill is vital to expansion this fast, along with loans. You don't need the sawmill at a high tier. You can do the sawmill at tier 1 and just get an AR terrain running up and down. That's one of the things we've done, actually. Um, if we pop over to the Connolly branch, we just have the, the starter, the eight starter logs and one dedicated locomotive. You can just use the G16 for this because you don't you don't need anything too powerful. You can just use weak things. Uh, but you can load eight logs at once on this specific track. This is Connolly uh, Creek L2. And then at the sawmill at tier one needs exactly eight cars <laughs> per day. And so because of that, it, it doesn't make you like millions of dollars, but it does make you a couple of thousand per day. You usually get like one to two, which is excellent. Along with that, you want to run a lot of passenger services. You especially want to expand them and try and get a corridor running. Have a dedicated passenger train that you're running on AI. And, uh... Honestly, just take the contracts you enjoy when it comes down to, uh, like, switching and stuff. <laughs> one or two thousand a day yeah one to two thousand a day if memory serves me right admittedly i've mostly done this on tier i mostly run the sawmill on tier three i guess we're only getting nah maybe it's not one or two thousand a day i don't fully know here because i guess this here is one thousand three hundred twenty per day <laughs> Sell mill tier 3 is god tier. I also recommend selling your caboose and buying the line to silva. I don't like the line to silva. The line to silva I hate. I, I'm gonna... I don't... Do not recommend people buying that route. <laughs> I know that some people like it, but to me, it's just... It's too much mainline running followed up with way too much switching. And it's... The balance is just way too... Too offset. <laughs> Personally, do not recommend. What do you saw? Yeah, this is like, I guess it's not quite one to two thousand a day, but even at tier one, it's gonna be like nine hundred dollars a day, maybe eight hundred to nine hundred dollars a day. 
<laughs> be fair if I do all that, I still need a new engine for all that. You can always just grab the another G16. <laughs> Maybe true, but it's an early game captive service that gets you like three thousand dollars per industry. Yeah, and that's three thousand dollars plus like three extra hours of work for something that I don't want to do. <laughs> Besides, per day doesn't really matter when you're getting more work done in actual real time, in my experience. I see we have overtaken the uh, the single coach passenger train. Both the coal mine and lumber mill are the most profitable customers. That's another thing. T14. If you're still here before you left. Uh, <laughs> if you're still here before you left. I can words. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Getting to Robinson's Gap... It gets you a lot of money. Getting the expansion to Alarka Junction is uh, another way to get a ton of cash really quickly. And it doesn't require you to buy new uh, new rolling stock. You do have to buy the expansion, the milestone, to, uh, to make it past up there. But we have AI, so if you have a dedicated logging locomotive, I do not want to run a dedicated logging train from, from here to there. Because the reason I'm willing to tolerate the runs to Connolly... I, with with this stuff is because I'm fine with push pull service on the Connolly branch because it's just the Connolly branch. It's not that far of a run between Connolly all the way up to Silva. That's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, probably twelve, thirteen miles. I don't want to have push-pull service on 13 miles of tracks. <laughs> and I've personally found the actual, like, turning around the train with AI on these log runs to not be the most fun to me. I can do it some- I can do it on mainline runs because it's more interesting then because I, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is there, but on log runs I just don't find it fun. I don't like pulpwood. And I'd rather have fun with my time than make all the money in the world. I'll make a lot of money, but Silva, Silva is not an expansion I plan on ever buying again. <laughs> you can also run around your train. I don't like doing that. I prefer just doing push-pull on this captive service stuff because I'm not really a huge fan of it in the first place. But I don't like push-pull on such a massive long haul. Pulpwood isn't for me. And we can keep arguing about this back and forth, but the fact is, I don't like Pulpwood. I don't recommend Pulpwood, period. Sure, it gets you money, but money doesn't buy happiness. It just buys more trains. Admittedly, trains are happiness, but if you're not enjoying the time it takes to get to that, I, I, it's a, I don't know. It's supposed to be a game. You're supposed to enjoy it, and that's just not what I enjoy. Here's the thing about a game. You get to play it how you like. Exactly. Exactly. And if somebody likes Silva, more power to him. Not for me, but more power to him. <laughs> also, is this a light? Hey, it's a light. Take care, T14. Sleep well, man. Sleep well. Hopefully, hopefully you can figure out how to make more money. Hopefully you can remember <laughs> the ramblings of this discussion. Take
Now running the sawmill because I want the yard to be dedicated for the interchange. If I decide to go solve, then that yard... Silva, sorry. Then that yard will be dedicated to the sawmill. <clears throat> That's fair. That's fair. How much more... Speaking of logs, how much more do we got here? Two point... Oh, we're, we're almost ready. Personally, though, I don't find that you have to do too much here as long as you keep the sawmill tier below, like, tier 3. Because you still treat this as an interchange. And then all you have to do is shuttle the cars over to this yard and then take the cars that are over here and, um... Bring them back. Admittedly hate switching Silva. Love running from there. <laughs> You're the kind of person who really likes mainline runs, man. So so that's no surprise. I also do hate switching there. I guess that's another thing. It's not just about the pulpwood in a way. Now that I think of it. Then again, articulating thoughts is hard. <laughs> oh, only going to get the paperboard contract if I get a dedicated switcher for Silva. Even with a dedicated switcher, man, it takes a while. <laughs> we we had a dedicated SW1 back in the old save and it, for some reason silver switching was almost always the last thing that we got done on that save <laughs> that reminds me is there a reason I haven't gotten my two strikes yet uh, yeah because you don't have two strikes radio <laughs> The one you got a couple of months back, like, those things expire, you realize. And the other one was just a warning. It wasn't necessarily a strike. <laughs> Made it sorry for being a little late. I went to the rails along the Mohawk train show. Ooh. Sounds fun. But hello, JHR. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Is this route 25 or is it 20 miles an hour? I feel like it's 20 miles an hour, but I'll, like, the only speed sign here is 25, so maybe I'll be fine going down at 25. <laughs> Somebody who, who avoids this sort of logging stuff generally. <laughs> I don't actually know. Is anybody smart? Does anybody have the the info on this? Connolly is 20 to 25-ish, if I recall, based on what the AI does. Yeah, this sounds about right, but I haven't... It's been so long since I've actually paid attention to this branch. Got three locomotives. One is a jumpy little brass model that only runs backwards. Oh, wait, no, one only runs backwards. Sorry, not the brass model. Uh, the last one gets power but doesn't run. Sounds like you got a couple of... What's what's the term for this? Uh, handyman specials to, to repair. <laughs> Uh, 
was browsing the web for SKH American Flyer passenger cars. I found a heavyweight combine and coach for eighty to ninety ish dollars each. Uh, is that a good price for the S gauge stuff? I don't know. <laughs> the one who runs backwards literally falls to pieces after a while of running. <laughs> It's like one of those those Lego death animations from those video games. <laughs> oh, you've run me for five minutes? Okay. Time to perish. generally bothers me when gaming videos use AI thumbnails. It looks like Shiza, and for F's sake, just press F12. You're not being innovative and using AI before anyone else, dude. I remember back on the Railroad or Discord, I would occasionally I would occasionally check what videos are being put out, and I saw one channel who was very clearly using AI images. <laughs> like... It did not capture the game, it was just generic train and man pointing shocked. It was so stupid. Part of me wonders if that actually helped to grow his channel though. Not for the sake of like, oh I want to use it too, I want to have an experiment, M mostly just because I kind of want to have it. <laughs> I want to abuse his channel as an experiment to see how terribly that went. <laughs> also, oh my god, you hit. I feel like every other website I've gone to recently has had, like, oh man, look at us, we're being so innovative using AI. Bro, y'all remember how NFTs went? Because I sure as hell do, and this just looks like the same thing to me, just under a slightly different retexturing. Considering a full rake of S gauge heavy, how much? How much is a full rake? Three cars, five cars. Costs around three hundred dollars, especially the ones with knuckle couplers. So basically, it's on. If it's three hundred for three cars, then it's basically on rate, roughly. A little cheaper. Bothers me regardless, but but especially gaming videos because F12 is right there. Press the button. <laughs> Typing a prompt is way more input than that. You are doing more work for a worse result. Exactly, like bro, just just take a screenshot from your video, go into Photoshop, crop it so that it looks good, and then slap a little text on it. That's all you need. <laughs> Brass model is so itty bitty. It's shorter than most of the tenders I own. Damn. Got another face for the stream, the Pogster. I don't know, I feel like I wouldn't use a Pog. Um Avoid the like PNG very often. NFTs are cringe. <laughs> They're so stupid. I think that's basically a general consensus at this point, though. It seems that most of the online world believe agrees with that statement. Some don't. I, I, and I don't know how to feel about that fact, but some people don't. <laughs> four cars? Okay, so four cars per rake. That's a little bit pricey, then, for the single coach and combine. Weird.
Not like super pricey, but a little bit pricey, you know? <laughs> Watch as somebody tries to sell three, uh, an individual car $300 a pop. <laughs> NFT and AI are more cringe than furries. Then, oh, that's a that's an easy thing to say. A 100 con, absolutely, no question about it. <laughs> uh, I forgot to throw the switch. I might be stupid. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh yes, we're just, we're going through conversation. I've clearly thrown the switch, right? 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 <laughs> HO scale brass passenger cars that go for upwards of 1500 per car, damn. And to think my dad, <laughs> I call my dad crazy when he buys a single HO scale coach for like $150. <laughs> I still think he's crazy, don't get me wrong, but... Guess who bought another HO scale bobber caboose and then realized he owns an exact copy down to the road number in N scale. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool though. Because JHR, then all you need to do is make one of those model railroads where you have an HO scale layout up front and an N scale layout in the back. And then you can have this weird perspective shift. <laughs> Considering AI art is pulling from talented furry artists along with other artists, lots of people are basically yelling at tech pros. <laughs> On the Tumblr page I have, I've seen so, so many threads of people showing how you can uh, fight against the AI tech bros. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Just got done with an art project where I drew a Pennsylvania... Ooh, streamlined K4. You know, for how much people seem to talk about the K4, I haven't actually seen many pictures of the streamlined ones. I know they exist. I've seen them before, but... It's always just fascinating how everyone's like, Oh yeah, the S1, the T1. Yeah, but what about the streamlined K4s? Why does nobody ever mention those? Well, aside, aside from you, today. Uh, <laughs> K28T, the small choo-choo. Yes, the bigger Betsy. Oh, you know what? Me saying that... I'm going to Google something real quick. Oh! <gasps> Okay, googling this something was very much worth it. I might have something I need to buy after stream. In fact, I might have multiple things I need to buy after stream. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. Where is it? This thing. How long is this item? Four and a half inches. <laughs> Baker Betsy. I... I have the materials so that if I really wanted to, or I guess I don't have the materials, but if I really wanted to, I could make a, a triplex tank engine in ON30. In fact, I could actually make a quadruplex tank engine in ON30. Actually, it probably wouldn't be, yeah, it would just be a duplex. It would have to just be a duplex. It would, there would be, it would be rigid. Actually, would it have to be rigid? Would there be a way to do articulation? I don't know. It'd be funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> Big fancy streamlining was only done in 3768. The only... Uh, the few others that had streamlining didn't have skirting down the sides. Interesting. But they still existed. 
a duplex tank engine that would be something yeah somebody's already made one in on 30 i know how to do it and i know what engine to get for that kind of job it'd be a little bit ridiculous it would also be kind of funny though <laughs> it would also be kind of expensive so i'm probably not gonna do it but i'm just gonna post about it on the discord and show off the really funny idea <laughs> Especially sad seeing some of my old favorite YouTubers using AI for that stuff. I get it's just one thing, but it shows they're just a content farm now. Yeah. It also kind of goes to show what kind of a person they are in a weird way. Kind of sad. Kind of sad? Really sad. Sorry. <laughs> Tell us, uh, a certain shop, a certain ON30 shop is currently offering a new set of items that they were not pre- that they were not selling yesterday. I know this because I checked the shop yesterday, and I might actually need them because I, I kind of need a couple of replacement parts for a couple of certain, um, things. A couple of certain projects. <laughs> I leave for two seconds and I come back to here. Four and a half inches. That is extremely out of context. <laughs> Content farms are lazy. They either don't care about on video quality or just care about making money. They care about money. It's not video quality. It's not at all video quality. They care about making money in a way that they perceive as easy. Hello, Mr. Santa Fe. Oh, wait, hold on. What am I doing? Other than being an idiot. I don't need to go that way. What am I doing? <laughs> Why did I turn the train around immediately? I need to pull this... Mm, I'm, I'm a little stupid today. <laughs> go right ahead, Nina. Go right ahead. I I'm out of your way, mostly. How many cars do we have here today, by the way? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two. Oh, wait a second. Stir is the biggest anti-content farm in a way, then hardly uploads vids and tries to make sure they are high quality. You obviously haven't seen the video we're going to be getting this week yet, 100 con. Because, uh, high quality. Sure, sure. We'll call it high quality. The hour-long video of Stir rambling about a, a random passenger car he picked up online. <laughs> Oh, and just you wait until you see the, uh... <laughs> when we get the bench work done, the video on that. <laughs> restate higher than a content part that's more like it <laughs> moderate quality half decent quality
Though admittedly, that's a low bar to clear. Number four is tied down. Number one is about to reach Whittier. I'm off for the night. All right, take care, Nina. Sleep well. Get some, get some rest, man. Get some rest. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> that's a mood. <laughs> Oh, God, I was so tired when I woke up today. I totally, I feel that. I 100% feel that. Try to stay up as long as possible, but the 6 a.m. wake up to work in a coffee shop is getting to me. I cannot blame you. Personally, today I know I'm going to stay up till around 1 a.m. Splatoon has a cool event going on, and I, uh, I want to participate. Salmon Run has a 100% green random weapons uh, session going on right now, and I like playing those because they're really funny. I'm currently like 800 power, something like that, 820 of 1,000, so. I'll probably be awake for a bit tonight, especially considering that I also am going to have to um, work on the 0 and 30 layout tonight and get some track laying done. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little energetic after that. Get to sleep in tomorrow because school's off because sun go bye bye. Lucky. I get to sleep in tomorrow because I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just existing, I'm sitting around. Dude, I remember back in middle school, I did one of the most fun things on my half day. Instead of sleeping in, my mother and I would just go down to a local coffee shop and play some games together. We play games like Take It to Ride, Set, Uno. Just go around, have fun, hang out. Good times, good times. The most annoying part of the figuring out how to build paths slash roads is mapping out the terrain. Ah, <laughs> uh, God, you're reminding me. I have to open up that chunk locked server someday. Alright, bonk. Donk. Donk. Donk.
Actually, what would be more interesting for a multiplayer server? Skyblock or Chunklock? There's probably a question I should ask the people who would actually play on the server, but <laughs> I'm asking it to chat anyways. Because why not? So far I have three maps, my content, my spawn, and my base are the area just right of that and the and just right of that another continent. I'd say Sakai block, many people on a Thailand tiny island. Sounds funny. Uh many people <laughs> seven hundred people on a oh, two by two or no, I guess it's not two by two, but cra just cramped. <laughs> One of the reasons I like Chunk Lock is just because uh, of how hard it'll be to expand. It'll be hard in a different way to Skyblock, and I think it might be more creative and an experience that not many people have done before. That would be kind of hilarious, though, having a session where there's, like, eight people on an island of that size. <laughs> That'd be glorious. What if Chunk Lock but Spawn is a small island in the middle of the ocean? God, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> but it'd be funny. It would be funny, I can't deny that. Brace a little too early. Donk. Bonk. Thonk. Blonk. In Russia, if hand is rotten, you cut off hand. If arm is rotten, you cut off arm. 
But if heart is rot, and I... Wait. Okay, I'm confused by how you rephrase that. You cut off leg. To be honest, I like using the K28 for switching the sawmill. Small size works quite well. Yeah, and it's got a nice amount of power, and the water capacity is not a problem because you've got the, the water tower right there, and you've also got the coaling tower right there, so... <laughs> hey, Mudge, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. It's been good so far, it's been good so far. <clears throat> Had some very strange conversations, but that's to be expected around these parts. <laughs> we were just talking about Minecraft for a moment, and the idea of opening either a chunk lock or a skyblock server for patrons. <clears throat> Let's see, what else have we talked about? Uh, weird narrow gauges, narrow gauge railroads in the area, how the layout's coming along, um... The idea of making an Owen 30 quadruplex. <laughs> Alright, bonk. So I put the K28 on the logging trains and the Connolly Creek and switching at the mill. Yeah, that's what we use her for, too. It's, it's also perfect because she is a logging mic. Logging tank Mikado, so she she's built for the job, and she's perfect for the job. Oh, we also talked a little bit about um, what you call it. Uh, I can't remember. Is O N thirty tiny? I'm not well versed in scale railroading. Uh, o N thirty is a scale I model. It's 1 to 48, which is a little bit of a large scale, but it's a 16.5-millimeter uh, gauge, which is HO gauge. So it's sort of in this weird middle grounds where it's big, but it's also not really all that big. <laughs> it's kind of strange. But we were joking around about the idea of making um, a Betsy, but just a bigger Betsy. And so I, I looked it up. I've looked up what it would take, and the locomotive shell that I'm aware of that we could use to make a quadruplex Betsy is four and a half inches long. The reason that's important is because the smallest motor that I'm aware of that's that's like actually a steam engine um, motorized wheel set <laughs> is only one inch long. Or, sorry, it's like 25.5 millimeters if we're being precise, which is basically one inch. Would it be a funny idea? Absolutely. Would it be expensive? Yes. It's like $100 per set of wheels. Would it be funny? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the best kind of model train. The one that makes you broke, but makes other people laugh. So while I am at it, let's sneak the passenger train onto the Y real quick. Okay, the fusee is still there. We're doing all right. Is it just you right now? Yep, Nina had to go. I was a little too tired. Just me. Me and my thoughts. <laughs> Brace for lag. 
I don't know why, but that sounds like something you hear in Star Trek. We'll probably be able to restart the day pretty soon, actually. Because... Oh my god, I forgot about the train that needs to go to Alarka Junction. Never mind. Why is there another car that needs to go to Stenzel? Why is there another car that needs to go to Stenzel? Ah. Uh. We're, we're total, we're gonna have to reduce the the rate at which stencil manufacturing is tier is on. Jeez Louise, man. Stencil is love, stencil is life. That's certainly a metal image to put in my head, thank you, Mudge. I might have to go use the bathroom or restroom in a second here. So, Mudge, I will let you pick your poison. Actually, you know what? I'll do it right now. I will let you pick your poison on whether or not you want to do the switching with Connie here. To to do the stuff over here in Whittier. Uh, if you want to run the passenger train, or you can also just set up the passenger train and let it run on AI. It might need refueling. I might need a little refueling once it gets to Bryson or something. Uh, or... You can work East Whittier and set up the train with the big, chunky Santa Fe for the Alarca Junction site. Your choice. I will uh, be back. I... Uh, I must commit restroom, I am sorry. My bowels are, are not happy. <laughs> Be right back. <clears throat>
returned. What have I missed? <laughs> Brace for lag trains? Oh, like the, the little Japanese song or whatever? <laughs> also, thank God it's not just me who's unsettled by the AI thumbnails. Yes, no, they suck. <laughs> They're the worst. I know, I know I'm lazy. I know that all I do is, is just take a screenshot of or, or whatever for my own stream thumbnails, but <laughs> at least they're not uncanny valley kind of things. Like, oh yeah, that's a train. Wait, why does it have five headlights? <laughs> Tripophobia, anybody? Oh, speaking of screenshots, apparently I just hit the screenshot button by dropping my phone on my keyboard. <laughs> I'm talented. <laughs> AI hey, just wants to be your friend. How do we know, though? How do we know it's, it's truly sentient? Oh, you know, this actually brings up a good question that I saw on Tumblr recently. What's worse? Knowing that you are a clone or that you are in an artificial robotic body? What would be more of an existential nightmare to you? <laughs> Important question. <laughs> Screenshots are just fine, and there's at least a couple of folks that I follow who still do that. It doesn't seem too difficult to get a decent angle. Yeah, it's really easy to set up a good camera angle in a lot of games to, to get a screenshot that's enticing. And you just use a, a screenshot from a previous um, stream. <laughs> stop forcing the interchange like every two hours. It's, well, <laughs> more like stop forgetting the interchange and the things we need to set up for the day. <laughs> I keep forgetting to buy the next expansion and so then we buy it and then we uh, suffer. What are the options again? I was out of the room. Um, what is more existentially dreadful to you, Celestial? Robot body or clone body? Knowing that you are in a robot body, or knowing that you are a clone. <laughs> clone, robot, robot body most likely would make me feel cold inside. <laughs> hey, you know, you don't know, maybe there'll be a good internal heating system. <laughs> Depends on the specifics of the robot body, and also whether the clone person is still right. You know, that's a good point. Also depends on if you keep the memories of the clone person, or if you're just directly a clone. I think you'd have to have the answer of you keep the memories of the clone person from the point at which you were cloned, whether that is after the person has died, or if they're still alive. I'll, I'll add that little, I'll add that little thing, uh, that little stipulation into this question. <laughs> you know the liquid terminator how can it change shape uh nanobots nanomachines son robot body would just be fun because then i could take mr roboto as my theme song a hey. robot probably I don't think I'd be that upset knowing I'm a clone if I was cloned to do military things though for me it's because taste is the, one of the most important things if I knew my tastes were fake I'd freak out and attempt to oof myself <laughs> go oof yourself <laughs> the best insult known to man
Weird that the very Spider-Man iterations came up with friends last night. Their kids had a coloring book with them in it. And that led to the whole Scarlet Spider thing from the 90s. What if you knew you had accurate taste sensors? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. How would you know you had accurate taste sensors? Because how would you be able to truly compare? Sure, you have memories of what it was like when you were, quote-unquote, normal, hu full human, but, like, how would you know with certainty that what you're tasting isn't just an artificial sensation to, um, to, to make you not oof yourself? <laughs> Alright, hold on. Focusing on the game for a second with my existential crisis in chat. Uno momento. <laughs> taste is different for everyone. That is true. Some people would be fine without taste. I don't know if I would be. I need, I like, I'm very picky about texture. That's a thing for me. And I honestly don't know which would be worse. I, I should figure this, I should figure out the answer to my own flipping question. Alright, and... Bonk. That's why I can't do corn chowder or any kind of chowder for that matter. The texture gets to me. Yeah, I've, I've never had chowders. Just because the look... The look triggers my texture issues. <laughs> I'm too afraid to try it. Maybe I should one day. Maybe I should, maybe I should challenge my picky eating habits. was a big part of said comics, uh, comics, actually. It wasn't even clear which one was the clone and which was the original, just which one woke up first. Oh, that's kind of... Oh, mmm. That, that's actually a really clever storyline. Also, just makes the existential dread all that much more spicier. Love it. <laughs> Hey, hello, Ginger. Welcome back to the stream. Welcome back. So, like, you live your life up to a certain point, and then there's another one of you taking on your life, and you can't go back to it. Unless you kill them! And <laughs> both of them were too moral for that. <laughs> one of them just gets a random mutation. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, like, barely short of it. <laughs> God, these stencil cards are gonna be a little weird headache to deal with. To think of a new industry for Raritor, what about milk cars? A dairy? A dairy wouldn't... Would it have milk cars? Wouldn't that just be tankers? Like... Slightly different colored dankers and reefers. Reefers could be cool though. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what one is slash was into their web comics. The early storyline of Elliot slash Ellen in El Goonish Sheev and still an, an occasional undercurrent. And I guess the Adam Warren take on Dirty Pear. <laughs> Seeing web comics just reminds me I have forgotten to stay uh, keep up to date with most of mine, and now I feel embarrassed and ashamed. Or post if you have a very interesting idea, the one in which everyone would puke at- No, don't- don't even put that into people's heads. I had to go to cold turkey on all my online comics some year ago. I had far too many and it was causing problems. Now I'm scared to go back to, because they're all finished. In case they've all finished. Also, I bonked that too hard. To, oh, I didn't. We're fine. <laughs> I, I totally get that, Tare, though. I, there's one comic that I've kind of been afraid to catch back up on because I missed one month of comics. And the story has probably progressed like... Five years in that time. That's, that's the wrong whistle signal, and also the wrong direction. <laughs> Perhaps you just live the same life with, with schedules 12 hours apart. Dude, that'd be actually really funny. <laughs> Could you imagine? Somebody, like, how do you stay up 24 hours a day? Oh, I just have a clone. A clone? <laughs> but instead of just being really open and upfront about it, you're, they're, like, trying to live a double life where they're hiding that fact. <laughs> it sounds like an excellent storyline. Where they're both basically living two separate lives. Just once on night shift and once on um day shift. Month isn't too bad, you can catch back up if you cover over everything, but the calendar part and skip backwards from the front page is definitely what it'd have to do with, say, prequel. <clears throat> I don't know if it's actually been a month, though. That's the problem. That's the issue <laughs> here. Is I don't remember when I forgot to read them last. I remember approximately in the comics when it was, but I don't remember how long it's been. It's been... It's some, it was sometime here in 2024, but that could be anywhere from one to three months, and internal fear and dread is welling up within me.
<laughs> it's an excuse to reread everything from the start. Ah, yes, let me go back through, like, what? 18, 20... No, 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 hold on. Let me look it up. <laughs> let me just go ahead and reread the last 30 years of this comic. <laughs> That was the tank with the new update. The tank's pretty good. We like using it over here in Whittier um, as the switcher but, and the logging locomotive. Makes good work of the Connolly branch. The 30, I'm gonna see if I can guess which that is in that case. Good luck! <laughs> I only read three web comics consistently. Just wondering how the fuel usage... Fuel usage is going pretty well. I think we've made two trips up and down the Connolly branch. And we've been doing all the switching here in Whittier. And all the switching in East Whittier. And it, we're, we're still sitting at 775 gallons of water. So we're doing just fine. Free Fall, Sabrina, Kevin and Kel. Nope, none of those. I do read Free Fall. That's one of the three I, I consistently read. But that is not the one that I've... um screwed up. <laughs> well, let me double check and make sure this, this was actually 30 years. Okay, you know, other hint, uh, sorry, it is almost 30 years. Technically one year short. <laughs> Some other webcomic that's been running that long as a challenge, but I'm not going to claim encyclopedic knowledge. <laughs> Do it for the bragging rights. Say that you have encyclopedic knowledge and then just go out of your way and Google it. <laughs> it's still 90 yeah 95 is early like holy cow <laughs> but it's technically not been running for 30 years Might have to pick up the tank then. Yeah, we're, we're picking up the tank. Don't worry. We're just doing this in a little bit of a weird order. I love how comically small this whistle is. <laughs> Yeah, we'll grab the tank. Uh, I, I've communicated to Mudge, who's currently acting as conductor. And, uh... Grab this, grab those cars, shove them all the way to the interchange. Oh, oh, you mean the tank engine and you mean for your own railroad. Yeah, so it's a pretty decent option for... It's excellent for the Whittier... Um... <laughs> Whittier sawmill. So the one with the black cat guy, but I thought that ended. <sighs> Trying to remember what one that is. I, f I feel like I should know that comic, but... <laughs> it's not that one. I know it's not that one. So 
speaking of story stuff, I watched a movie recently in class, and it felt like they were, were really following that bad if advice. If you're stuck, kill a character. I swear a main character died every 30 seconds. What, did you watch Final Destination? <laughs> Tank Engine is great for Shunning and Bryson too. Yeah, it seems like it's a good option for Shunning and Bryson because you just get so much tractive effort for the the, the, the your size. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely going to have to Google, unless it's something that went away and came back. I don't think it's something that went away and came back. From my knowledge, it has been going strong with updates at least once a week since it first started. The updates haven't always been comic about the comic, but or sorry for the comic, but they've they've always been about the comic. I might be stupid, girl genius. There you go. There you go, he figured it out. <laughs> yeah, the four I consistently have read are, uh... Schlock Mercenary up until that ended. Free Fall, Girl Genius, and, um... <laughs> Cyanide and Happiness. <laughs> Thought it started a bit later. Yeah, I thought it started a bit later too. I thought it would have started around the like the two thousands, around the year I was born. But no, it's it's a nineteen ninety five one, apparently, according to Google. <laughs> Which is really funny because you mentioned introduce time travel as a plot device. Of all the things to mention about bad story elements. <laughs> might have started as ink and paper, but then got digitized. It might have. It might have. It might have been in, like, a, um... Yeah, okay, yeah, it's a comic book series turned into an ongoing webcomic. So I guess it's kind of cheating. <laughs> Freefall did that too, I'd say it counts. You know, fair, fair. <clears throat> I didn't actually know that about Freefall, to be frank. Will we have enough money? Oh, I was going to ask if we were going to have enough money to repay the loan. Uh, it turns out we already had enough money to repay the loan. I don't need to wait to deliver these cars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
No, I really gotta be careful with the temptation to open up the pages again. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Look out. Don't open a webcomic that you haven't touched in 15 years. <laughs> pay down the debt. Yeah, we're trying to pay down the debt over time. We, um... This is not as bad as it was on the last save. That's the good news. <laughs> also, we might actually be able to repay it in a few days. I think we were at like 55,000 earlier today. Is it bad that I don't understand a thing you're talking about because I've never re read even a single webcomic? Well, this is your opportunity to read a webcomic, TK. <laughs> if you want a good webcomic to read, TK, do read Freefall. I think that you'll, that one's right up your alley. <clears throat> it's not 15, but it might be 5 plus. <laughs> I think I kept up with Schlock as it was openly coming to an end. Yeah, I, I kept up with it around that time, too. My sister fell in love with it when I was really young. Um, <laughs> well, I think we had, like, the first five books. Back in the day. Actually, we might have even had the first seven books. I know we, we at least had it up to the point of Loda. Reading equals bad. Books told me so. <laughs> we, um... My father's a children's youth librarian. I mean, he's retired now, but he was a children's youth librarian. I think the best example of this is that he... One, one kid gave him a Lego figurine that looked uh, as closely matched to my father as could be mustard. <laughs> Excuse me, by the way. And in in our uh, kitchen, we have I actually built him a Lego display. That's just him doing story time with a couple of kids. And on the walls of the display are a bunch of stories just made out of Legos. So on the top you have like a dragon holding an oar. And I came up with a whole bunch of names for all of them. Uh, the dragon holding the oar was something along the lines of even dragons brush their teeth because the oar is kind of like positioned in the dragon's open mouth. <laughs> and I don't know uh, about you guys, but that sounds like a children's book to me. I could see even dragons brush their teeth being a children's book. <laughs> then we also had, like, what? Santa painted my mom's garage. That was a funny one. <laughs> I'm really the only one that wants a 262 in game is a natural set between the smaller engines and the bigger ones. I don't know if it would actually be a natural set between the smaller and bigger ones, though, Ginger. It depends on the 262, I guess. If anything, you'd probably just find another 280 or 282 to fill the gap. <laughs> Better yet, we should get a 2442. We should get an articulated. Get Skookum. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so stupid, I love it. <laughs> if only it were possible, Skookum is a great logo. Skookum is so cute! I love Skookum. It's great. For moderate engines, though, I could also see getting something like Pulsin number 2. 
or Santa Maria number 205. I feel like those could be some good um, middle of the lines line stuff. All right, gonna gonna get this engine up on the log cars, and then we'll we'll leave her there for a bit. What we need is a four two 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 two. I don't even know if I'm gonna say the correct number of twos. <laughs> Big boy octoplex. Now we gotta we gotta get that thirty inch gauge quadruplex I was talking about earlier on the stream. It's only four inches long. <laughs> That's what we need. Be wary of the Archive Shock. Yeah, the Archive Shock, I feel like, on Freefall is a lot easier to get through, though. Because it's only a three-panel comic that updates once every... Uh, three times a week. So, like, it's, it's a lot easier than some to deal with. So... It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And he gets... He gets to watch a comic about a... <laughs> oh, God. I have a whole bunch of reaction images from Freefall, and I used to have Sam Starfall as one of my um my profile pictures for the longest time <laughs> a two four six eight the locomotive we love to hate god is it how would a two four six eight even work How would that thing turn? <laughs> Probably had that going on two laptops ago. Maybe more seeing as I had some printouts of Mimi ones on my university dorm door in like 2001. <laughs> I love the idea of walking down college and you just <laughs> you just see like a single panel of Sam Starval being like I suddenly have the urge to become a lawyer. <laughs> it was a 2682? Was there? I know there was a 2680, oh, but a 2682, I haven't seen that. Oh, somebody's re ah, I see somebody's refueling on water. I was wondering why you were just sitting there, I'm like, huh? <laughs> What's he gonna move? I need to access that single car bound for Stenzel Manufacturing. How about just a two? <laughs> it would have it would have to have a tender behind it. I don't think you can make a unicycle on the ra on the rails. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. But you could have a, a O two O, um, with, with like a two wheel tender behind it. Actually, what would a two two O look like? Is this something I need to build in in O N thirty? Is this an engine I need to try and build? <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> Though Sam may be my may be more my online soulmate, as a one-time IT tech, I was constantly somewhere between Florence and Helix. <laughs> uh, the perfect balance. Two two zero Stephenson's rocket. Stephenson's rocket is boring. What if it's a modern two two zero? A two two zero T, something that looks like this engine right here. <laughs> How would that look? <laughs> Technically, the teapot engines were two two zero. Well, some of the teapots were. Some of them were bigger. I think, maybe. I don't know. What did I do to that fan wallpaper of her looking at Data Slab and Horus screaming, they install the window stand on my brain? <laughs> oh man, this is just a different kind of horror now. This started with clone versus robot horror. Now, now we're just talking about the horrors of, of corporatism. <laughs> Terrible, I love it. <laughs> the best wheel arrangement is an 030. The Irish one's with tender, not the Indian one. Ah, uh, yes, the one where the Tim Traveler um, try blew the whistle incorrectly. <laughs> Wait, what? That's real? Yeah, it's a monorail engine. That's why it's an O three O. There's only one rail. All right, and donk. Here's a question. If the tender had booster trucks, is this technically a locomotive? I think it's just part of... I don't know. I don't know how booster trucks are qualified. I'm... <laughs> That's a good question. But a monorail booster sounds hilarious, and I am 100% here for that. Very silly idea. Monorail 212 OT. <laughs> TK, that thing's going to derail as soon as you put it on a corner sharper than 1,000 meter radius. <laughs> I 
how about with articulation between each axle? How would you articulate the the pistons to move the wheels or like the the drive rods to move the wheels? How would that work? <laughs> How? Okay. New question. How the heck are we going to do this? How the heck are we going to manage putting these empty cars and loading them properly? Oh, I th never mind. I think I figured out. Never mind. Never mind. I'm smart. I know how to. I know how to do things. <laughs> Does the gear train do all the directly connected axles count as part of the same number? I think geared engines are technically counted as 0440s. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough. An O twelve O monorail geared engine. Yes, this is normal. This is how my life works now. <laughs> Cog engines being O one one O. Cog engines don't they come with Wouldn't that more be like an O four O T C or something like that? I don't I mm, mm. Brain brain no braining for that one. <laughs> Uh, that is not the correct way to send this. Oops. Alright, so the way I'm planning on doing this is I'm going to have it so the cars that are loaded with metal stock are going to be up here closest to this. And then we're going to have it so the cars that are half loaded with machine parts are up uh, closest to where the engine can access them so that we can easily swap out what metal stock car is currently in use. Or not metal stock car, sorry, machine parts car. My bad, my bad. Bonk. Handbrake. Hand... Can we get a tone in this or not? I just want to hear some tones. Uh, tones is in like whistle tones. Oh, 
or are we talking about something else? I'm confused. You can have 080 with rods in the middle and four gears... In the middle four and gears to the outer axles to be uh, all B1080. A two truck gear engine with two axles per truck and no leading slash trailing wheels would be an 080. Oh, sorry, I'm reading this backwards, aren't I? <laughs> other than the cog wheel, the other wheels are unpowered. Wait. So that wouldn't be an 0110, would it? Spacing calculator? Wouldn't it be just an 02 or a 220? Or an 0220? Brain confusion. White notation weird. Maybe you count the support wheels as head. Wait, are the cogs the only things moving the train? So it'd be. Wait. I didn't know that. Wait a minute. I thought they had standard. What? Sometimes, but not always. Okay, okay. Brain's still confused, but at least a little less confused now. Um. <laughs> My new simplified notation. It's either a train, a bigger train, or the biggest train. Where's the big boy fall and all that? Is that a, a train or is it a bigger train? <laughs> How to piss off anyone who really likes big boy 101. Just say what I said. Uh... <laughs> We might actually have to leave the 282 out here. Um, so that we can quickly move the stuff once it gets loaded properly? Hmm. Also, I probably could have done this in fewer moves, I just realized. Uh, I shift clicked that. I don't know why the angle cock is open. Weird. Some uh, others have, like, whatever place the static display cog engine at the Colorado Museum came from, the whole line is sloped and cogs, so the visible wheels are only for support. Some others, however, have flatter sections where things are driven more conventionally. It's actually kind of funny to imagine. <laughs> A cog railroad, where it just, it actually interchanges with a standard gauge railroad. <laughs> right, donk, 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 donk.
That's what I remember, but I don't want that to be written in absolute tr truth, just in case it was a fear dream. Too bad! It's absolute truth. <laughs> All words are fact. That's how the internet works, right? <laughs> Looking at the steam cog engines in Colorado, there's two wheels per axle and a cog in the middle and two axles. If you say it on the internet, it must be true! It's like that one Garfield meme. From, from the TV show, the, the 2D animated hand-drawn TV show they had for a while. If they say it on TV, it must be true. For today's revelations, Wyoming isn't real. <laughs> Think about it. How many people do you know from Wyoming? <laughs> I love that meme. Hey, money, let's go, let's go. Despite the fact that we had to pay $2,000 to get the expansion to Alarka today, um, we, we might actually be able to pay off $10,000 of our loan all in one go. That'd be sweet. <laughs> if I wanted to be real, it's real politics. <laughs> All right. Can park this engine. Right here. That's starting to load again. This is starting to unload. What else is there? Isn't that the, just the basis of quantum physics? If I believe it's real, then it must be. <laughs> quantum physics. Making sure the state of Wyoming still exists. <laughs> oh my... I didn't I didn't even think about what I'm saying here. Oh that's that's going in the out of context stir quotes pile. One hundred percent. Wyoming both exists and doesn't exist until properly observed. <laughs> Okay, what else do we have to do? Um, Connie is here. Eagle is on the outskirts of Bryson for some reason. Oh, yeah, okay, right, right. Um, Pertha is here. Brunk. Brunk and Air Eric's I guess the one last job we'll do for today. Eric's needs to get back to um to Alarka. Until I check inside the box, I will not know if Wyoming is still alive. Yeehaw! Shut up!
I'm actually not entirely sure why Nina brought this back here, by the way. Um... Because I think we kinda need the engine for the return trip tomorrow morning, in-game. When... When we, uh, return from Alarka Junction. Okay, hold on. Okay, we made it the right way. Thank God. <laughs> How's our tender looking? Ah, we've got... We're doing okay. We'll refill up Bryson. Bam. Easy. Reminds me of Stefan Fry backing out of getting into trouble for saying something technically true but misrepresentable on QI. The Earth is not round. It is an oblate spheroid. God, that's that's playing with fire right there. If Wyoming doesn't exist, then what about North Dakota? Has its existence been inverted? I've been to North Dakota before. I've been there. Not for long. But I, I can confirm North Dakota exists. I've observed it. Well, we're going to have a lot of people loading into this that aren't going to Bryson today. It existed the last time it was in your within your visible range. How do you know its state of existence hasn't been altered since then? Uh, simple, because it's still in my visible range. Come on, TK, you should know this is an Oregonian. <laughs> we can just see North Dakota. It's part of existing here in Oregon. It's one of the perks. <laughs> it's actually been a while now that you we're, we're talking about this uh, it's actually been a while since I've been on vacation with my father maybe I need to pester him to go out again that'd be fun go out to Michigan or something go out to Minnesota go out to Colorado maybe could be an enjoyable little excursion You have a visible range of 1,331.4 miles. Longer than that, TK. Come on now. What if I wasn't born in Oregon, but I moved there and lived there for a significant amount of time? Uh, you'll probably have reduced vision, but you'll it'll grow over the years. To go to North... To <laughs> North, North Dakota. Some call it Canada, but they're just blasphemous. <laughs> Describes a trip of many thousands of miles. Could be a nice little excursion. Well, yeah, it's mostly I mostly say it's little because we don't get out of the house very often for trips at all, and so anything to me is sort of a little trip because they happen so infrequently. I guess you could argue that they're big. I was born in Oregon, and yet I have terrible eyesight without my glasses. Oh, I do too, TK. Don't worry. My I'm telling what I'm looking at, bad. But being able to see it, good. 
There's <laughs> a Washingtonian count. Nah, nah, you guys, you guys got Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Actually, is it Paul Bunyan that came from Washington? Probably not, but I'm going to say that it is. <laughs> Y'all got the big blue cows. Alright boys, we're here. Paul Bunyan was from Tennessee, close enough, same thing clearly, right? I didn't flunk my geography class, what are you talking about? North Dakota is actually South Canada. You're old enough, you should know basic geography. <clears throat> I didn't have to cross any borders to get there. It's not South Canada, you fool. It's New Canada, like how we have New Mexico. How are we looking? How many passengers we got? 60 or 60? Let's roll. Fun fact, South Detroit is actually Canada. I know this be You want to know why I know that fact already, Ginger? It's because... I was trying to look up the timetable for the the Wolverine service or whatever. I was looking at, at all the passenger services in Michigan. And as I was looking at the track diagrams to figure out where things were going, I saw, wait a minute, why is there a passenger station on the other side of the river here? Why is why aren't these passenger stations connected directly, dude? Why doesn't the train just go to the other side of the river? And then I realized. <laughs> the U.S. annexation of Canada's inevitable per my chemistry teacher? <laughs> well, that's, um... That's certainly a conspiracy theory to believe in, sure. Ah, crikey. Uh, that's a little too fast. Well, we've got some stuff we're gonna need to throw in the sheds. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, whatever. We didn't derail, at least. Whatever you can get a plane between Windsor International and Detroit Metro Airports. Considering how stupid planes are, I'm willing to bet that you can. <laughs> With how, how silly some flights are on occasion, you know? Good lord, this is like trying to play... No, no. Down. I wanted to be a 10% forwards. No. 10% forwards.
Okay, that'll that that'll have to do. Actually, quite a lot of French place names along the Detroit side of the river, too. They're invading! Look out! Anyhow, on the Canadian side, there's a lot more of that, and also suddenly a bunch of them, which are named after places in England. <laughs> I'm just, now I'm just imagining a French, a French location with an English name. So, uh, sorry, like a, a UK style name, a British style of name, not not just English in general, very specifically British. <laughs> Quebec has mounted a black ops and they annexed several small and very specific parts of Michigan. <laughs> it's secretly there just so that they can sell things across the border without any suspicion. They smuggle it in and then they sell it at these French shops. Because everybody thinks that it's US. <laughs> Bring her in for a stop. I think we're gonna overshoot the station a little bit. Oh no, we made it. We're fine. How many passengers are coming to Bryson today? Only eight. That's yeah, something. It works. Scrolls just a little further into Canada. Okay, so there's literally a small city 100 miles from Detroit just called London. <laughs> Isn't there also a couple of Londons here in the United States, especially on the East Coast? <laughs> oh my god, how many people want to go to Whittier? Um, we might need to do some push-pull service with the, the big passenger train. Um... Sneaking, sneaking suspicion. It's Moscow here in the U.S. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Deep night with the Russian girlfriend. <laughs> 
Hey, Bryson's calling tower is filled. Let's go. That's actually really huge. It's awesome. It's a Paris, Texas, and California. I'm not surprised. I mean, there's Hell, Michigan, as we mentioned many a moon ago on our um, Roads Online series. Brain is spacing out a little bit. I'm sorry. I haven't been reading chat. <laughs> Slowly oozing out. I'm almost. Nodding my head like, yeah, that's me. I feel like that's a song lyric, but no, no, it's just me. It's literally me. Party in the USA lyrics. I figured that out like half a second after I made, made my comment. Don't worry about it. I'm totally not brain dead after streaming for four and a half hours. What are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> He's in Alaska. Just American Canada. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why do you think that Alaska and Canada share a railroad together? What was your opinions on the three new engine, the A23, the T22, and the F71? I really like the F71 because it actually gives you a trade-off with the Berkshire. Um, the F71 is a stronger engine, but the Berkshire has the, the better fuel tender. And, and I really like that nature because it means that you actually have a trade-off to consider when you're trying to buy your big honking engines. Because you've got the diesel, which is extremely fuel efficient, but you kind of need to get some extra... Um, stuff set up for it and it's kind of pricey you got the berkshire which is excellent at water um but a little bit cumbersome on turntables and then you have the um santa fe 
which is sort of like the... It's the strongest, but it comes with some fuel issues. I kind of like that. Not huge amounts of fuel issues, but some mild ones compared to the other two. T22 feels like a bit of a weird inclusion. Like, it's a good engine, don't get me wrong. But... It's, like... The A23 and S23 are really close and similar in power and fuel and whatnot, and they're just a little bit stronger. And the T21 is a stronger engine overall, though it doesn't have as much fuel capacity, so I guess that's something. But it also just, the T21 is kind of overpowered because of its insane acceleration. So T22 feels a little weird as an addition to the game, but it's a well, it's a nice addition. It's a nice little engine, gives you another choice, another option. It's cute. T or not T22, A23. I like that one. It's pretty. Texas is America's Australia. Yeah, Texas has big spiders that are going to come up and eat your ass at night. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. Is Texas or Florida more in line with the kind of, of stereotypical crazy that people associate Australia with? Again, stereotypical. We're just here for the funnies. Uh, <laughs> Cause I feel like... On one hand, I feel like Texas probably has the crazy natural stuff that's more akin with, um... with Australia, but also more like Florida for Aussies. Exactly, like crocs, man. <laughs> Crocodiles. Uh, and also uh, the, the news headlines of Florida people. I guess that's not really fair, though, because like the, the Florida man headlines aren't exactly wildlife doing things. I guess actually, okay, new philosophical question. Do Florida man headlines count as headlines about wildlife or no? Are Florida men wildlife? <laughs> does, does that constitute? This is an important question. We need to know the answer. Parts where you have to drive a road train for two solid trains, I think you'd be two solid days. To get from one down to the next and parched outback aren't very Floridians. But the billabongs full of crocs aren't exactly Texan. God, this is, this is a philosophical question. <laughs> this is the ultimate philosophical question. Take care, Mudge, by the way. Thanks for tuning in. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll have to do like a little bonus stream where we'll, we'll actually get you on for once. Make up for the missed birthday. Florida man is one half cryptid, one half demigod superhero. <laughs> you dare insult the scriptures!
<laughs> Louisiana. It's a bit of Texas and a bit of Florida. To be frank, I forgot Louisiana existed, but also I forgot like half of the state's names anyways, so... What do I know? <laughs> oh goodness, there's a passenger trade right here. Uh... Okay. Set up a fusey right here then. And we will trail with number two. Hundreds of Florida men are planning to shoot down Hurricane Arm Irma. Yes, it was an actual headline, and it was an actual thing they tried to do. Oh, I know, this is... <laughs> this is something that happens a lot of the time, TK. Is that every time there's a hurricane, and during hurricane season, they have to put out a warning that says, Do not shoot the hurricanes! And then they shoot the hurricanes anyways, because people are morons, and... Well, hey, the Darwin Awards are, are happening soon, so hey. Perfect timing. The problem with shooting a bullet into a hurricane is that it just adds another piece of debris that's just gonna fly back at you. I mean, I don't think I need to say this out loud. I think you people are smarter than this. But, like, that's not really something I considered personally, the idea that the bullet would fly back at you. I just thought it would get lost in the storm and it would do nothing and you'd waste a bullet to shoot a burglar or something. But no, no, it's actually, it just makes things even worse and more dangerous. Also, you're close enough to the stupid hurricane that it's probably gonna suck you in soon, so maybe you should have just gone inside and gone to the bunker like a normal human being. But no, you insisted on the Second Amendment, and now you're here. Or, well, okay, now you're not here. <laughs> her, her tell that the railroad devs are working to extend the word route all the way east to Asheville, holy cow. Kind of hoping they also extend out fully to Murphy as well. That'd be insane. Like, this 54-mile main line is already a lot of work. Could you imagine going... How long was the Murphy branch? In total. <laughs> I feel like you'd know this, Hillbilly, of all, of all the people. <laughs> like, maybe around 100 miles? Maybe... 90... Planning an extension for the current route as well already. Uh, just through the grapevine, this is this is a rumor. It's not necessarily something that's confirmed, Gilded. In the 100 mile range. Woohoo! That. Oh god, can you imagine actually having a 100 mile main line? Could actually be kind of fun. Like, I, I could see having. Hmm. Could be interesting. Alright, it has been almost five hours. We're closing in on the five hour mark. Slowly, no, we're not. I guess we're not quite there, but we're kind of reaching that point. Um, I should go eat lunch, or I guess kind of half dinner, whatever you want to call it. I, I should probably go eat. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in today. It has been fun as always. Um, and I will see you all. I don't know when. Uh, I might do another bonus stream on Twitch, kind of like how I did Splatoon. I might, I might do like a... <laughs> I play another game, who knows. Um, I'll see you all on Friday at the latest, or on Tuesday when the video goes live for the uh, ON30 layout. There's a little project we've been working on, so... I'm excited to show that. See you all on Friday, folks. Cheers, everybody.